Is it wrong to be upset that somebody cashed out their life insurance before they were gone when you were going to get that money? We'll get to that in a bit, but first, a story from Express Swordfish 582 Am I the jerk for calling out my husband's co-worker's wife for trying to flush a maxi pad down our toilet? I'm still pretty mad at the whole ordeal. My husband's co-worker and his wife are both mad at us and think I humiliated her, but I think her lack of common sense is what did it. My husband and I recently hosted a cookout at our house for his co-workers. He gets along pretty well with most of them and enjoys hosting. Co-worker's wife Julia goes to the hallway bathroom and comes back. I end up going after her and notice the toilet is clogged and starting to overflow. Something large and white is stuck. I use the plunger to unclog it, and lo and behold, a very large bloody maxi pad. Julia was the last person to use the bathroom, so I come out and ask her if she tried to flush a pad down the toilet. She got embarrassed and said yes, and I told her she needed to go clean up the mess she made. There was water all over the floor with particles of her pad and blood everywhere. I asked her if no one ever taught her to not flush a pad. We have a septic tank, and they cost thousands to repair. You don't flush pads, especially not the extra large ones. It's not like she tried to flush a panty liner or something. Julia cried and her husband yelled at me, but who does that, especially at someone else's house? Husband's two female co-workers came to my defense and pretty much said it was stupid of her to do that. Julia half-hearted cleaning up her mess and her and her husband quickly left. All of their co-workers think Julia shouldn't have done that, but my husband and his co-worker are having a whole feud about it. Am I the jerk for calling out my husband's co-worker's wife for trying to flush a maxi pad down our toilet? Part of me does feel bad for Julia here, but I think she wasn't using common sense. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy these hard-hitting Am I the Jerk Here stories, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is from Throw RA No Picks Please. Am I the jerk for saying that I don't want to be in pictures at my wedding as the bride? My fiance's family never held back on jabs about my nose. My fiance said he knew they really loved me the moment they started with the jokes. They're the kind of family that loves to make fun of each other. My grandparents used to make comments about my nose that were kind of crappy, especially because my dad is Jewish, although I've never known him, and I got the nose from him. In general, I've tried to not be sensitive about it because they don't like sensitive people. Although my history with it and knowing my nose came from my dad, who I don't know, made it a bit harder for me. My fiance made this comment once, which was supposed to be joking and sweet, where he basically said he was so lucky for my nose because it was the only way he had a chance with me. That comment stayed in my head since. The idea that I'd actually be beautiful if it wasn't for my nose. I've had really bad self-esteem and would go in and out of believing I'm ugly. I started thinking about having a nose job. After we got engaged, I realized if I was going to do it, I should do it before the wedding. He was really supportive of the idea and excited for it. He made some comments about being glad I was losing the beak, something he'd never expressed before I suggested it, which confirmed to me that I needed it. My fiance loves my new nose. I hate it so much. I feel like I'm staring at someone else's face. I look like any other woman in the world besides myself. I've always struggled with depression, and I was finally in a good place before this. Now I can barely get myself to leave my room for work. My fiance is really frustrated with me. He thinks I objectively look better, and I need to get used to it. I know I'll have to, but I've been wearing a medical mask in the house because I can't stand to look at my face. He says this is me sulking like a toddler, but I can't control how I feel. He asked what I was going to do for our wedding, and I told him that I don't want to be in any pictures. He freaked out saying my selfishness was going to get in the way of us having a happy wedding. I didn't want to let this hurt him, so I tried coming up with options like wearing my veil covering my face in the pictures, incorporating a scarf into the outfit, wearing my mask, etc. And he said if I do any of that, We might as well not get married at all. That hurt a lot. I can't stand to see myself in pictures like this, and having everybody see my nose the whole day would make this even worse for me. I'm already going to be blaming myself for the fact that I won't have my nose in pictures. I feel like I'm ruining the day for him, but what he wants will ruin it for me. Am I the jerk? 
I don't think OP's the jerk here. This is all about their mental health and what they're comfortable with. It's easier said than done if you have like locked in commitments, especially financially. But to me, it sounds like maybe the wedding should be pushed back or postponed. And honestly, with a partner that treats you the way OP's partner has treated them, maybe canceling the wedding is the right thing to do. Our next story is from throwaway 636 Am I the jerk for telling my husband to get over himself after he accused me of sharing his private medical information with my friends? My husband's been in and out of the hospital for two months for health problems. He's getting home rest and his condition is stable. Not improving, but is at least stable. My female friends come over since I can't leave the house during the night and we chat in the living room for an hour or two. My husband heard me talk about his health with my friends and seemed bothered. I told him I was just telling them what's been going on, but he said I could keep it vague without disclosing his private medical info. I thought he was being ridiculous for this and thought he'd let it go, but last night he blew up at me after my friends left, saying that I once again went and shared private medical info about him without his consent and despite him repeatedly asking me to stop. We had a loud argument where I told him off for policing my mouth and told him to get over himself since it wasn't like I was sharing his medical file online or stuff like that. I'm just venting to my friends. He's sulking and refusing to let it go, saying I'm violating his privacy repeatedly and disrespecting his boundaries. But I think he overreacted. Am I the jerk? Personally, if you ask me, I think OP is the jerk. I think boundaries are boundaries and I feel like it was pretty clear how the husband felt and expressed himself. I get that OP feels differently about those boundaries and feels those boundaries are wrong, but it should be respected. Some people just don't want their medical information, serious or not, to be a topic of discussion. This next story is from ThrowRA6546009. Am I the jerk for calling my husband insane for missing work just to teach me a lesson because I didn't iron his uniform? Days ago, I, stay-at-home mother with three, was in the midst of doing laundry when my husband, breadwinner, works as a pilot, asked if I could iron his uniform before his shift. I didn't say yes because I was busy. Laundry, then kids' homework, then cooking, etc. I said I may not find the time to do it. He turned around and walked away, completely ignoring what I was saying. An hour later, he came downstairs freaking out, asking why I didn't iron his uniform when he asked me to. I told him I was busy and reminded him of how I didn't say yes to his request. He blew up saying that I obviously don't care about him displaying professionalism at work. Um, it's just a uniform. It's not like it was dirty, just needed some ironing. He lectured me about how his work is important and that although I'm a stay-at-home mom, I should still make his job a priority. He decided to miss his shift as a way to teach me a lesson and show me how my lack of cooperation and my refusal to help him out could affect the money that keeps coming in. I called him insane for missing the shift, and he got offended and called me a hypocrite for calling him insane and acting all surprised when it was me who caused the situation to happen. I mean, I could have taken some time off doing my chores to iron his uniform, but still thought his reaction was a bit much. Am I the jerk? For those asking why he didn't iron the uniform himself, because I'm the one who usually does the ironing. And he said, it's on the list of my house chores list, which is true, but I don't give it priority like other chores, like homework or laundry. I think OP is definitely not the jerk just because of how controlling the husband seems here. To me, like it screams weirdly controlling, I would say maybe nearing abusive behavior. And honestly, how long does it take to iron? 10 minutes? There's no way that the husband couldn't just iron their own shirt. This next story is from Bop on the Head. Am I the jerk for reporting my daughter's substitute teacher? I, 35-year-old female, have a daughter, Sienna, 15-year-old female. I had her pretty young, and we had a really good and close relationship. She tells me a lot of stuff that happens at school, but one thing in particular stood out to me. Sienna has an individualized education program to be able to use the bathroom without a pass, as well as go to the nurse when she needs, get water and food when she needs, because she has chronic anemia and sometimes will pass out. This particular day, Sienna woke up late and skipped breakfast to catch the bus. She texted me while I was working and said she didn't eat and felt like she was going to have a fainting spell. I instructed her to ask to go to the nurse. She texted me a moment later, saying the teacher was telling her she had to wait until two other kids came back from the bathroom. Long story short, the two other kids were in the bathroom for quite a while. 
More than 10 minutes according to Sienna, and she fainted for a few seconds. I picked her up and then I called the school and reported the substitute for negligence. I told my twin sister and mom about this and both of them said that the guy was just doing his job and I shouldn't have called and made a huge fuss about it. So am I the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk. OP actually meant to clarify that it was a 504, not specifically an IEP, but they have both of those things. I mean, if the substitute was just trying to do their best, that's completely fine, but OP should definitely reach out because if they just allow it to be passed, there's not going to be any accountability for it. I don't necessarily think like this substitute should be blacklisted from ever working in this field again, but it would be hugely beneficial, I would think, to give them the information that what they did was incredibly inappropriate considering the kids' needs and special plans that you can't be so black and white about it. Our next story is from Professional Gur 602 Am I the jerk for letting my brother-in-law eat my dog food? So my sister and her husband are living with me temporarily because of Hurricane Ian. Their home in Fort Myers is in bad shape. So I agree to let them stay with me and my dogs. I own a nice bungalow and it's just me and my dogs. It's a little crowded, but I can deal. I have a couple of little dogs and I like to make them raw food. It's healthy for them and I like knowing what they're eating. I use cheap ground meat and I mix in chopped up vegetables, seeds, and organ meat. I also mix in their doggy vitamins. I make up big batches whenever I find ground meat at a good price. Then I make patties out of the mix and freeze them. At night I take out a couple of patties and leave them in the fridge to thaw out for the next day's food. When I was out yesterday, my brother-in-law saw the hamburgers in my fridge and decided to grill them up and eat them. When I got home, I went to feed my dogs, but the food was obviously not there, so I asked my sister if she had fed my dogs while I was out. She said that her husband had eaten the burgers in the fridge. I kind of giggled and said, oops, I guess I need to thaw more out. He heard me and said that they tasted off anyway. I told him the reason they tasted off is because they were dog food. He started dry heaving and saying he was going to puke. He yelled at me for keeping dog food around people food. I yelled back that he's a guest and while he's welcome to anything in the house, perhaps it would be best if he asked before he ate my food. Him and my sister are angry at me that I didn't label my dog food. I'm kind of angry that he complained. Yes, I'd be a little grossed out too, but it's just funny. He isn't hurt or anything. There's nothing that isn't edible by humans in the food I make. I wouldn't eat it myself, of course. Am I the jerk? Personally, I'm of the opinion whether or not you're welcomed with open arms to stay in somebody's house or not, you should ask before going and eating something out of their fridge. Unless this is like one of those situations where you go over to their house so many times it's like second nature, you just have like a understanding. I mean, who stays over at a relative's place, sees a patty in the fridge and goes, you know what, I'm gonna cook that up and eat it myself. It's kind of a jerk move, so I don't think OP's the jerk. Is it acceptable to snack on relatives' food without ever asking? Our next story is from Plus Independent 3718 Am I the jerk for uninviting my dad to my wedding because he took back the money he promised? I want to be clear that this is not about money. I know no one owes us money, but he promised and it's about his reasoning. My fiancé and I are currently planning a wedding and my mom got herself uninvited as we found out she'd made some jokes behind our back about my fiancé's appearance and style and saying that she was never going to be anything more than a stay-at-home mom. I was furious and uninvited her. A couple of people told me I was being a jerk as it was a one-time thing she said not thinking it would get back to us. Also she was tipsy, maybe a bit drunk. My dad recently found out that she wasn't going to be there, they aren't married, and confronted me. He said what she said wasn't nice, but realistically people crap talk and gossip, and I should give her the chance to apologize and move on. I explained that I can't let someone who feels that way come to our wedding, and he said that I was being ridiculous. He said that he was no longer going to pay for our wedding if I was going to treat my mom like that. I decided to uninvite him, as I feel he's no longer a supportive person. My fiancé was privy to this conversation and is obviously hurt. She doesn't want him there either, so I feel the need to support her. But now my dad and his wife are telling everyone how we feel entitled to their money and how arrogant we are for uninviting everyone who disagrees with us. I feel slightly weird about it because obviously he doesn't have to pay for our wedding. 
While I obviously think that what the mom said is awful, I mean, it just seems like this was a one-time thing where something awful got out, and OP took the nuclear option, and even when they tried to apologize and work towards moving past it, it was already blown up and the radiation was spewing out and there's no going back. Well, considering the dad probably feels it's unfair, I don't think I can blame them for pulling out money out of something that they feel they're getting mistreated in. And also, to be fair, they don't owe you the money regardless, even if they said they were going to pay for it. Would you guys agree with that? Our next story is from an anonymous poster. Am I the jerk for telling my girlfriend I don't want the Christmas holiday to be all about her? I, 31-year-old male, have been together with my girlfriend, 25-year-old female, for two years now. We both live in the London, UK together, but I'm originally from the Czech Republic. I'll visit my family in my home country next Christmas. My girlfriend also wants to come. Last night we were looking for train tickets for her. I already booked my flight ticket separately, she's afraid of flying. While looking for dates, she told me that she'd like to arrive a few days before the actual Christmas, so she can relax and sleep a lot after the long train ride to prepare for the busy Christmas days. This really annoyed me. I told her I don't want this holiday to be all about her, I just want to have a good time with my family. She doesn't need to tell me how many days she needs to prepare and sleep, and that she'll only have energy for 3 out of 7 days. I wish she would keep me out of that. This has been a theme for every holiday. She's often tired after a social activity and needs to have a day rest in between. I feel super limited by that. I just want to have a good time, not a girlfriend who's always tired. My family also thinks it's weird that she sleeps long and sometimes skips an activity when we visit to do something on her own. But now she's upset with me. She told me she's reconsidering coming at all for Christmas. She says that I make her feel like she's not allowed to take up space. That it'll only be a fun and conflict-free holiday if she pretends she has more energy than she has. And yeah, it's true sometimes that I want her to just suck it up. I'm also tired sometimes and I don't let that limit my life. Is it so weird that I just want a peaceful holiday and for her to leave me out of comments that she's tired and wants to rest? 100% I think OP is the jerk in this situation. This might be one of the clearest posts that just straight up expose that OP and their partner just do not work well together. I'm not a very outgoing person myself. I know that if I go to a very big social event with family or a relative's family, I'm going to be very exhausted and I'm going to want a day off in between too if I can get it. My social battery isn't that big. So for those desires to be expressed and just met with, honestly, don't even tell me about that stuff. I don't even want to hear about it. Just suck it up sometimes. They just aren't compatible. Our next story is from Defiant Theme 4812. Am I the jerk? I want to cash out my life insurance policy so I can spend the last 9-12 to 12 months in comfort, but my parents, beneficiaries, are threatening to disown me. So yeah, I have a terminal medical condition, male 28, which I won't go into too much detail about. I didn't have the best health insurance and doctors, so I found out I had a big problem pretty much when it was too late. About the only thing I had of value other than some meager savings, an even smaller 401, and my car was a life insurance policy I got years ago when I was 18. It was a relatively small amount yearly and awesome terms, so why not? I always thought I could swap it over to a future wife and kids, but not happening now. So I haven't been able to work now for about two months, but I won't be eligible for hospice care until probably a few weeks before the end. The actual policy itself was for an eye-watering amount if I died before a certain age, which unfortunately is what is going to happen. I've been living at home with my parents rent-free since I stopped working, which is good of them. We haven't had the best relationship growing up, and they pretty much only did the minimum required by law in terms of how they raised me. No complaints, but not parents of the year material. A lot of this was due to finances. I've been putting money towards food and utilities, but not the rent they're paying, as that was a cost that they were covering by themselves, and my being here hasn't increased it. Anyway, I've been investigating cash outs, both through the company and investor groups, that will give you a bit more in exchange for being named as beneficiary. 
I'll probably stick with the company offer to get things moving faster. There's going to be some taxation issues, but the end result will be that my parents will essentially get an amount that will cover my funeral and possibly a really good secondhand car. I estimate that the amount I'll get will be enough for me to rent a nice condo near the beach, nice meals, maid service, some great experiences while I'm well enough, and some in-home care nursing towards the end. My parents have basically said that the life insurance policy named to them will set them up for life and allow them to buy a house and invest etc and probably even retire early. They're in their 50s and were probably going to have to work until they dropped. They're telling me that they made a lot of sacrifices to have me move into their house until they go to hospice, but I really don't see what that is other than the inconvenience of three adults in a two bedroom house. One of them was going to give up work towards the end to provide some home care until I qualified for hospice, but my cashing out will mean that they can keep working. I get that it would be the noble thing to help my parents out, but I don't want to. I don't think OP could be the jerk in this situation. When faced with the reality that this is all you're going to have, and you yourself earned yourself an opportunity to kind of celebrate life and have a good experience before it's all gone, I say how can you possibly be the jerk for choosing that option? It would be noble but this is OP's experience and considering the hand that they were dealt, I don't blame them for trying to make it as comfortable and as awesome as they can while they can. Also I will say the parents seem oddly giddy about life after OP. Oh, we're going to invest and we're going to retire early. Thanks for planning ahead, I guess. Our next story is from throwaway22314157. Am I the jerk for telling my sister to stop taking showers with her husband in my house? I'm female 32, my sister female 28, and her husband male 32 moved in with us two days ago after they lost their apartment to medical debts for their child, my nephew. My husband and I are more than happy to have them stay for a few weeks till they get this resolved. However, yesterday at 7 p.m., I was in the kitchen when my husband rushed in and said that he saw both my sister and her husband walk out of the bathroom. They'd most likely taken a shower together. My husband said that it irked him and I agreed that what they did was somewhat inappropriate. He asked me to speak to my sister on the matter and I did. She got defensive asking how this is affecting me or my husband in any way. I told her that it made my husband feel uncomfortable and would rather that they just take their shower separately. She started ranting about being overwhelmed by their son's health problems and not having some alone time together as a married couple and found this activity as a bonding time to spend together. I apologized for how she felt but requested that she just do as asked. She got mad at me and said that I was being inconsiderate and she didn't understand my husband's hang up on what she and her husband do. We started arguing and she stormed off to the guest's room where my nephew and brother-in-law are. She's not speaking to me but my husband said I did the right thing by speaking to her and setting this boundary. Am I the jerk? Am I and my husband overreacting to this? I think OP is definitely the jerk in this situation. I could kind of understand it if you're like, please don't, you know, do whatever in the guest bed. Because, you know, it's possible to uh, leave your mark, so to say. But not only are they doing whatever in a place where it will be squeaky clean after they're done, I assume. But it's also the more green and economical thing anyways. Them showering together honestly is better for the environment anyways. You don't waste as much water. If I were them, I would end up obeying the rules by still having both of us go in the bathroom and shower one at a time with us both in there. Don't worry, stuck to your rules in that case. Our next story is from Bright Physics 8375 Am I the jerk for only inviting some of my sister's children to my wedding? I, female 25, got married to my husband, male 25, in August. We kept it small and simple and didn't want too many guests due to budget, so we only invited close family members and friends. My older sister Dawn, female 38, has 10 children, 17 year old boy, 16 year old girl, 14 year old boy, 10 and 9 year old girls, a 7 year old boy, a 5 year old boy, 2 3 year old boys, and a 1 year old boy. My parents and the rest of my family aren't religious, but Dawn and her husband are very hardcore Christians and believe that having lots of children is God's will. Obviously, inviting all of my nieces and nephews would be quite a cost. 
My wedding isn't child free, but my husband and I decided it would be fairest if we only invited Dawn's three eldest kids. I've talked to Dawn about it and explained our reasoning, but she was really offended and said that I'm picking favorites. I told her I'm sorry, but 10 kids is a big cost on our wedding budget and that we try to be as fair as possible. Dawn accused me of being a bridezilla and thinking I'm too good for her and her family. I told Dawn if she doesn't like it, she doesn't have to come, but that she's my sister and I really want her at the wedding. Dawn, her husband, and the three eldest did come to the wedding, but with other family members bringing small children, everyone was asking her about why not all of her kids were there. After the wedding, Dawn has been very off around me lately. She told me she understands how I feel about her babies and said that I'm a bad sister and a terrible aunt, and has accused me of not respecting her religion and lifestyle. My parents and other siblings have been making comments like, Don't get too excited for XYZ. OP said only three people can come because there's too many of us. The comments have been getting to me a bit, and I'm wondering if I was the jerk. If you're not having a child-free wedding, I could understand why maybe the 10-year-old and the 9-year-old should have been allowed. But overall, 10 kids, it's just, how do you even expect you to be able to bring 10 kids to a wedding? I don't think OP's the jerk because does nobody else see the optics of how you take care of 10 kids at a wedding? How do you take care of 10 kids at home? They must have like a well-paying job and some nanny work going on or something. Our next story is from Unlucky Aside 3033. Am I the jerk for telling my mom her dream for my wedding stopped being possible the day my dad died? My dad died when I was 7 years old. He was my favorite person, my mom's favorite person at the time, and I kind of think he was the person who could complement our personalities enough for us to be super close. Even as a little kid, I kind of knew that. It broke the two of us when he died. But then she found someone else. She found Luke. She married Luke when I was 9, and he became her person. Luke, upon realizing my dad had been the parent I was closest to, tried to fill that space and was unwilling to listen when I said that that space was reserved for my dad. It caused some tension. Over time, I let some things go. They would call themselves my parents or my mom and dad. I always called him Luke. I always told people close to me about my dad and would make sure it was known Luke was not dad. Our relationship now that I'm several years out of their house is amicable but not close. I don't hate them, but my mom and I still don't mesh well, and Luke still wants to try to fill that role my dad had, and I still don't want him to. Ever since I got engaged, my mom has been more present. She's told me how she always dreamed of this day, etc. Over time, she brought up how she and Luke couldn't wait to see him walk me down the aisle and give me my father-daughter dance and how they were excited to be the mom and dad of the bride. I told her none of that was happening. She told me it was always her dream though that from the time she found out she was expecting a girl, she couldn't wait to watch me on my dad's arm and in his arms for a dance. I told her that was possible when dad was alive, but not when he was gone. She told me it was still possible. There was still my dad, Luke, and that he deserved it. They both did. I told her I was walking with my fiance and no father-daughter dance would happen. I told her he was not going to be listed as father of the bride anywhere because he is not my father. I ended up telling her to leave and I went back to less contact. Then my mom showed up unannounced and started to tell me all about this dream again and what it meant to her and I told her clearly without hesitation that her dream stopped being possible when my dad died because he wasn't there to do that stuff and that Luke was never going to be filling my dad's role for me. I told her she might be able to switch them out easily, but I was not. She left in tears, telling me I'd punished her for moving on and punished my dad for not being Cal, my dad. That she and my dad deserved better than that and I was spiteful. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk and I think this is one of those situations where because from the get-go they were trying to force this new dad replacement figure, there was never a chance for it to grow naturally. Maybe if Luke came in and was just supportive and loving without trying to force titles, without trying to be dad 2.0, maybe it would have gotten to that point. But if you're not going to allow that to possibly grow naturally and you're going to try to force it, you shouldn't be too surprised that there's going to be resistance the whole time. Opie's definitely not the jerk. And our final story of the day is from Information Primary 31. 
Am I the jerk for tipping and embarrassing my boomer father-in-law? I worked as a server in university, and my daughter worked at Starbucks and a local restaurant when she was in school. I know how servers earn their money. My father-in-law invited us out for supper for my mother-in-law's birthday. We went to a nice Greek restaurant in his neighborhood. The meal was fantastic, and my father-in-law said it was on him. Cool. My kids are well-behaved and know not to go crazy on their grandparents' money. I've known my in-laws for almost 20 years now. I know he doesn't tip, so I always bring cash and tip whenever we dine out with them. So after the meal, as we were leaving, I checked the bill and dropped 20% on top of his cash, more or less. I guess he accidentally left too much money once and made a big deal about getting his change because the server came running out with the tip I left. My father-in-law knew how he paid and it didn't include a $50 bill. He blew his top, saying I disrespected him. By doing this, I was implying that he was cheap after he took out my family to a nice restaurant. I was just trying to do right by the server. I wasn't trying to be a hero or a jerk. I just know that we took up a table for almost two hours and she deserved a tip. My wife is mad at me for upsetting her father. My daughter gave me a hug and said I was right. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk here because... The fact of the matter is, these servers live off of tips, and it's undoubtedly an awful thing to do to not tip unless your service was that bad or you're that strapped for cash. Am I the jerk for calling my sister's husband a piece of crap because he's representing my ex in our divorce? I asked my ex for a divorce two months ago, and I found out a week later that my sister's husband was going to be his solicitor. I wasn't completely surprised as my ex has helped his career a lot, but I was still hurt when my sister told me. I've avoided him since finding out, but my parents invited everyone over for dinner and I missed them, so I went. I tried really hard to bite my tongue, but he kept referring to me as my ex's wife and told me that if he was me, he would stay married because I was going to lose a lot if I divorced my ex. I ended up telling him that he was a real piece of crap in front of everybody, including his daughters. My sister got angry at me for saying that in front of her daughters, but I was so mad I told her I didn't care because he was a jerk. So now she's pissed at me. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk. It's definitely not a favorable situation to be in. Would you guys agree with me when I say I think OP should be careful about what correspondence they have here? Because whatever information they discuss or give away could be something that's used against them, whether it's issues that have been going on in the relationship or anything like that. Or am I kind of overthinking this? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Pizza Party Nope. Am I the jerk for not going out to get a special pizza? My brother brings over his girlfriend to a pizza and movie night. I get the $10 Costco pizza for everyone. The only toppings they have is pepperoni or cheese. I get one of each. We also have some wine in a can, coke and bottled water. Other than that, it's bring your own beer or wine. The girlfriend gets there and acts like the pizza's disgusting and asks if we can order anything else. I said no. She asked my brother to go get her this pizza she likes. A medium cost $24. I told my brother if he goes, take her with you, you're not coming back with a special pizza just for her. She makes him leave 10 minutes into the movie because she was offended that we didn't go out of our way to make her welcome. My brother's been calling me all sorts of names and calling me cheap. I don't think it was my responsibility to cater to one person at the party, and it's rude to get a pizza just for yourself. He called me trashy, and I said the only trashy one at the party was his girlfriend, and not to bring her around again until she learns some manners. Personally, I think both sides were jerks. To be honest, this whole event doesn't really sound like that formal or very super well-planned. So if the girlfriend gets there and they realize they're just not that into that pizza, I don't think there's anything wrong with them asking, hey, is it alright if I go grab a pizza for myself? Because what's the big deal? Who, Who really cares? I think if you have an issue in that situation, you're just trying to be a victim or feeling overly insecure. But for her to act like everything there is just disgusting and then forcing him to leave after everything, that also felt over the top and not necessary. I mean, overall, just look at OP's rules. Bring your own beer, bring your own wine. But if you get there and you realize you don't really like that pizza and you want to get your own, don't you dare think about bringing your own pizza. OP really went and died on this Costco $10 pizza hill. Our next story is from an anonymous poster. Am I the jerk for telling my husband I never wanted our daughter after he refused to take care of her? I, 27-year-old female, have never really wanted children. 
I told my husband this many times over the early years of our relationship, and once we were married, I tried my best to really stress that. He, 26 year old male, never seemed to mind this and always agreed that he didn't want children. This was going well until I got pregnant about a year into our marriage. I knew I did not want the baby and assumed my husband wouldn't either, but when I told him, he was excited. He ended up convincing me to go through with the pregnancy, and so I did. Flash forward to today, and our daughter Rhea is 15 months old. I really do love her, but I'm exhausted. My husband works full time and I'm a stay at home mom. I'm with her almost 24 7. I never have a break, I do everything with her. I get her up in the morning, feed her all three meals, play with her, bathe her, change every diaper, take her out and put her down again at night. Last night our routine was going as usual when my husband got home. The baby had been particularly difficult that night and I was reaching my limit. I asked him if he could put her to bed that night so I could lay down. I expected him to say yes as he hardly sees her with work and she's usually asleep by the time he gets home but instead he snapped at me. Apparently he'd had a very long day and he needed to lay down. I was shocked, literally never been so angry in my life. I went and put Rhea into her crib before I responded to him. I feel horrible, but essentially what I said was that I never wanted to be a mom. I never wanted our daughter, he did. So why is it all on me to care for her? Why can't he just make a bottle and read the baby he wanted a darn book? He was immediately furious with me. He couldn't believe what I had said. He hasn't talked to me since. So, am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. And more than anything, it's not about whether you wanted the baby or not. It's that you're tired and you're one half of the parenting of this kid. It doesn't matter if they worked a full eight hours lifting heavy boxes in a hot warehouse. If they come home and they got a kid, they should help out at least a little bit. Notice how in the end, after the argument, He's only upset at half of the argument. He's only addressing half of the argument. He couldn't believe what OP said, very conveniently latching on to the fact that OP said, well, I never wanted the kid in the first place. But they're just going to look past the whole argument and why it happened, which is, why can't they, a person who wanted the kid, ever help out? They only latch on to being offended from what OP said about not ever wanting the kid initially. And yet again, nothing to do with responsibility. Our next story is from Thin22, Am I the jerk for sometimes hanging out in states of undress with my boyfriend's roommate? I'm pretty much a practical nudist, meaning that I love to wear as few clothes as practical. Naturally, in social settings, I try to be more careful. My boyfriend and his roommate have a pretty sweet apartment downtown, so we spend most of the time there. He's a really nice and chill guy, and on days my boyfriend and I don't want to get intimate, we just hang out in the living room, drinking, smoking, and watching movies. Sometimes I end up just hanging out in a towel after a shower. I explicitly checked with the roommate that this was okay, and he didn't mind. Unfortunately now, he has a new jealous girlfriend who doesn't hang out with us sometimes, but she feels like she needs to police what I'm wearing in the apartment of my boyfriend. We got into a bit of a stupid text message exchange when she found out and she's clearly jealous and insecure. It doesn't help her self-esteem, I guess, that 9 times out of 10, people are gonna say I'm the hotter person. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and all that. I'm not self-centered. It's purely a comfort thing. It's not remotely sexual for me. So I think I'm in the right holding- Our next story is from Baby Seeing Woe. Am I the jerk for not babysitting during an emergency? I, 25-year-old female, have a brother, 34-year-old male. He has two kids, one a few months old and the other's three years old. My brother and I haven't had a good relationship, we're just starting to get to know each other again. I don't know his kids very well. His mother-in-law retired and she lives with him and his wife to help take care of the kids. He called me at 1am the other night asking if I could come over and watch the older kid because the baby was sick and they had to take him to the ER. I asked why his mother-in-law couldn't watch the other kid, especially since the kid was sleeping. He said mother-in-law needed to sleep to take care of the kids the next day. I said, no, sorry, I had work in the morning and there was someone there to watch the kid. I hung up and went back to sleep. Now my brother is pissed because he had to stay home while his wife took the baby to the ER and had to go through everything alone. I feel bad, but not really. The baby just has a cold, by the way. If there was a legitimate emergency, I don't see any mother-in-law who's staying over that was there for the sole purpose of helping with the kids that wouldn't offer to stay up and watch the kids as necessary. 
just while this emergency is going on. And also, it doesn't fall on OP's shoulders just because they're related or just because they've become a contact recently. I mean, if there was no other option, maybe you could argue OP was a jerk. But in this situation, they're definitely not. Our next story is from Roberts, 2003. Am I the jerk for refusing to let my husband eat from my plate at the restaurant? My husband and I have a totally different taste when it comes to food. That's perfectly fine. However, lately and whenever we go out to a restaurant, we'd both order different dishes, and then he suddenly asks to eat from my dish and would throw a fit if I refuse. He's done this several times, and I snapped and told him to stop asking and order from the same dish if he wanted it so bad. Last night we went out for dinner and ordered different dishes. Before we made the order, I asked if he was sure about the dish he picked, and he said yes. The food arrived and each of us had our plate and started eating. Literally minutes later, he asked if he could eat from my dish. I looked at him like, are you serious right now? And he went on about how he couldn't resist the looks of the dish and really, really, really wanted to try it. I refused and said no. I kept eating and he kept pushing till I blew up and he got quiet all of a sudden. He then got up and walked out. He was furious with me and picked an argument at home when I got back. He said that I acted petty and that all he asked for was a few bites from my meal and I chose to make a scene and yell and embarrass him instead. We're not speaking to each other right now because of what happened. I feel crappy about it and I think I could have just let him have some of the food instead of choosing to die on such a silly hill. I think if this is one of those situations where every so often when you go out you get your burger and your fries and your partner takes a few fries, if you blew up in those kinds of scenarios maybe it is a silly hill to die on. But this is like a long standing situation that continues to grow because they just keep doing it. It's a huge annoyance, you clarify with them before you ever start that it's not going to happen essentially and they just don't get it. It's like trying to teach a toddler to not stick their hands in your plate of food. I imagine in a lot of marriages it's pretty normal to kind of share plates all the time, but if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to share your food, you shouldn't have to walk around with a jerk label for that. Our next story is from Bad Coworker. Am I the jerk for making coworkers pay me for my time? I, male 22, work a couple of different jobs. I don't have kids, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, or a life really. I go to work, come home, play with my ferret, play with my actual ferret, and that's about it. I'm always willing to switch shifts with people, but I found a way for it to benefit me. I accept money in return for switching shifts. One lady wants to go see her family for Thanksgiving. I have that weekend booked off. She asked me to switch. I said I have a vacation planned and it would cost me $400 to switch my reservations. So she paid me $400. It's win-win, but my roommate thinks I'm a jerk for booking the holidays off when all I plan to do is get high and play Zelda. So what OP's actually doing is they go and they book holidays off, they don't actually have plans, they just book those days off, and then they lie to their coworker and say, oh well I've got a reservation, it'll cost me 400 bucks, which they just end up pocketing that $400. I don't know, cause it's not like they're forcing them to, and OP would otherwise just enjoy their time off regardless. I don't think OP's the jerk on the basic premise of this, but I've gotta say asking $400? Is that not an amount to be shameful to lie about, taking from another person? I mean, just the fact that they lied about the $400 fee, that alone makes me feel iffy on jerk or not jerk. Our next story is from responsible at 8847 Am I the jerk? Boyfriend's birthday is the same weekend as my sister's wedding. My sister's getting married on a Friday night, and my boyfriend's birthday is the same weekend, that Sunday. He's turning 29, and this would be his third birthday we were together for. Usually for his birthday, we drive to the beach and spend the day there. He was hoping to do the same this year. However, for my sister's wedding, my family planned to rent a house right near the venue for a long weekend so we didn't feel rushed. We got a house for Wednesday night through Sunday morning. Obviously, my boyfriend's invited to the wedding and would be staying with me in the house my family rented if he chooses to. And obviously we would get cake and go out to dinner etc for his birthday while we were at the rental house. He wants to leave the rental house on Saturday a day early so we can drive home 3 hours and then drive to the beach the next morning for his birthday an hour and a half drive. I want to spend the whole weekend with my family and I don't want to leave early. My sister's getting married. She's my best friend and I don't want to miss out on anything. I feel like Saturday we're all going to be a little hungover, we'll probably take naps and 
spend the day talking about everything that happened at the wedding. The house has a pool and a hot tub, pool table, fire pit, etc. So we wanted to spend the day hanging out relaxing and reminiscing on the wedding. I don't want to get up that day, pack up my stuff and rush home just to pack again for the beach and have to wake up early the next morning to drive to the beach. He feels like by Sunday the wedding is over and now it's his birthday so I should be focusing on him instead of my sister. I said his birthday happens once every year compared to my sister's wedding being a once in a lifetime event. I offer to go to the beach the next day, Monday, or the next weekend, etc. But he only wants to go on his birthday. He's turning 29 years old and I feel like he should understand how important this event is to my family and to me and he shouldn't want to drag me away from it. He broke up with me because I refused to leave a day early. I'm so frustrated why he can't see how important this is to me and how excited I am to be there and spend time with my family. My parents and I also split the cost of the rental, so for me to leave early would be a waste of my money. He doesn't care about that because he didn't have to pay, even though he'd be staying there with us. I didn't ask him to pay his share because he's unemployed and doesn't have the money for that. I think OP's not the jerk and I agree wholeheartedly with them that this is a once in a lifetime event. It sucks that it coincides with his birthday, but you can set aside another day in the near future to really celebrate it and have a whole fun day with it. If that's not good enough for them, I think they're just being overly selfish. And honestly, maybe it's for the best that they broke up with OP. I think maybe they dodged the bullet for OP. Our next story is from Double Leadership 5372. Am I the jerk for telling my friend she should work less if she wants more time with her husband? About seven months ago, my friend Tori, 34-year-old female, began to vent to us about some of her marital problems, namely that her husband Jack, 35-year-old male, doesn't have time for her. At first, we let her vent and just listened to her and gave her support. I know that Jack is a stay-at-home dad that works part-time from home, and Tori's pretty big into her career. At the time, I didn't question how things were when she got home because I just wanted to listen to her. Since then, she's had the same complaint every time we see her, and some of our friends started to offer her advice, like tell Jack how he was hurting her feelings and tell him what she needed from him. It sounded like good advice. This year, our kids are in the same kindergarten class, so Jack, myself, and another friend have been taking turns carpooling the kids. Whenever I drop their kid off and take them inside, I would always see Jack finishing up cleaning, laundry, cooking, and other household chores. Tori also has two nights a week she either comes to one of our houses after work or she goes out with her co-workers after work. Yet when we see her, she still has the same complaint about Jack not having time for her. This last time I saw Tori, some of her friends had started to talk down about him to her about the whole situation. I asked Tori if Jack is still doing most of the childcare and housework while working from home and she said yes. I asked her if she gets paid overtime for working so many hours that they need the money and she said no. She's on salary, but she wants to get to the next level. I told her it sounds like she's been misrepresenting the situation and it doesn't sound like Jack doesn't have the time for her, but she may not be making time for him. And if she wants time with him, she should cut back on her hours so she's home at a reasonable time and maybe not go socialize two nights a week while he's at home. Tori started to cry and tell me that I was shaming her for having her career, and our friends agreed. I said it wasn't like that at all and that there's nothing wrong with her having a career, but if all the other advice hadn't been working after so many months, maybe she needed to look at how she was also contributing to the problem. Now they're both upset and barely talking to me. Was I so wrong to tell her that? Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk, and I think it's a very valid thing to bring up and ask about. I feel like in a lot of situations like that where things aren't necessarily going well in a partnership, it's overall a really good question to think about and ask in regards to, am I doing something that's causing issues here? When there's an issue with the relationship and one side is not considering that they might be the problem, well then it's not a great surprise that you're struggling to find a real answer. It's essentially the same thing in the more like 1950s nuclear family role where some family man is working some proper eight hour job and then a couple nights a week also going for drinks after work. 
and then coming home and wondering why there's no time for the relationship to really feel like a relationship. I mean, it sounds to me like John is no slouch, and running a household like that and keeping everything on top, you can't really work overtime hours and then expect for there to still be plenty of time to hang out. Our next story is from Flurzel Knot. Am I the jerk for getting mad at my friend, for referring to me as her gay best friend? I, 24 year old male, have had this friend who will call Carrie, 24 year old female, for around 10 years now. I came out to her as gay when I was 16, and at the time she was very respectful and supportive. But over the last couple of years, I've been feeling kind of dehumanized by her. Every time we go out together and she meets someone new, usually a guy she's interested in, she always wants me to act like a wingman and calls me her gay best friend when she goes over to talk to them. I've told her many times I don't like being called that one, because it makes me feel like an accessory, and two, it means she's outing me to random people who I don't know and could act maliciously towards me. She would always stop calling me that for a while, but pick it right back up. The last time it happened, we were at a cheap bar, and she was interested in a guy there. She wanted me to talk her up to him, and then came over and started to talk to him herself. Well, he ended up asking who I was and what our relationship was, and before I could say anything, she chimed in, Oh, he's my gay best friend. I kind of lost it at this point, because it had been going on for too long, and I had a lot of pent-up frustrations with it. I yelled and told her, I've told you over and over not to call me that and you keep doing it. I feel like you see me as an accessory and you're using me to fulfill your Yas Queen fantasies. You're risking my safety every time you out me. I don't think we should talk anymore because you clearly don't respect me enough not to do something I told you repeatedly I don't like. If you can change the way you see me, maybe we can hang out again, but I need some space from you. Meanwhile, the dude's just standing there awkwardly, but he ended up agreeing with me. I've been getting texts from her and mutual friends saying I was a jerk and needed to apologize because I was overreacting. I ended up just blocking all of them because I can't deal with it. I have, however, started to feel bad. My boyfriend agrees with me and, as I said, so did the dude she liked, but am I the jerk? OP is definitely not the jerk. If they keep calling you something and you tell them, do not call me that, and they cannot respect that, then it's clear that they can't respect you. Whether they want to try to downplay how severe it is calling you whatever, you told them you don't want to, and that's straight up disrespecting you. And I agree with OP's concerns. Sadly, there's a lot of people out there who still feel very strongly about gay people, and you end up in some cheap bar, you tell the wrong guy the wrong thing, maybe they've been drinking, in good old gun toting America, who knows? Our next story is from throwaway baby Luigi. Am I the jerk for telling my colleague that she basically called her newborn daughter Luigi? I'm an Italian woman who works for an Italian company that has a close working relationship with a few American companies. More specifically, I'm the Italian liaison of a kind of big department in one of these companies. So basically everything that my American colleagues decide comes through me and I relate it to my Italian colleagues. In the years I've worked there, I've made good friends with some of these American colleagues And this past summer, one of them, S, female, early 30s, invited me to her house in the US. I had been in the US many times before that, but always for work, never for leisure, so I was really happy. It's the 4th of July and S has organized a nice party. I meet other people who work for the same company, but whom I didn't know. Amongst them, M, female, mid-late 20s, with her newborn baby girl, Gigi. I'm not big on children, so I mostly ignore the baby, but I talk to M for a while and with other people too. At some point in the evening, M tells me that her husband is Italian too, and they wanted to choose an Italian name for their baby to honor his ancestry, and they went with Gigi. I knew this name was used for girls in the US, but I didn't know someone thought it was an Italian name. So I tell her that while Gigi exists in Italy as a name, it's not a girl name. And in Italy, there's a law that says you can't name a child with a name that's traditionally used for the opposite gender. And neutral names don't exist. She's like, what do you mean? And I tell her that Gigi in Italy is a nickname for Luigi. And that if she comes to Italy and introduces her child as Gigi, Italians will think she has a little boy named Luigi. 
At this point, poor M starts wailing, sobbing that I'm just being mean, I'm making fun of her, I'm jealous of her, saying that her daughter is not named after a stupid video game character. I tell her that Luigi, and Mario too for that matter, are completely normal Italian names that have existed for centuries or even thousands of years before the creation of video games. This does not calm her down at all. M is having a nervous breakdown and someone calls her husband who was at work to come pick her up. They leave shortly after, and I realize I've inadvertently ruined the party for everyone. Am I the jerk for telling this girl her baby's name is not what she thinks it is? Considering M flaunted the reasoning for choosing that name, and how that name would not actually hold up to that reasoning if scrutinized, I think OP's not the jerk for clarifying that their provided reason actually doesn't make much sense. And I mean, it's hard to say whether or not they were being a jerk without hearing the way it came across. Like, phrasing probably does matter a lot. Like, if OP were to say, If you took that baby to Italy and told someone they're named Gigi, they'd think you'd have a little boy named Luigi. Then maybe you'd be a jerk for laying it on that way. But if you were saying it out of concern and just as a heads up, I don't think you're a jerk. Also, I learned something new here about Italy. I had no idea it was like that. I didn't know they had a whole law about it. Our next story is from Obstucked. Am I the jerk for wearing a white dress to my sister's wedding? I, 28-year-old female, was invited to my sister's, 32-year-old female, wedding on October 4th, 2022. For months, my sister planned for her wedding, and about four months before the wedding, she let us know her maid of honor, bridesmaids, and all other things to do with guest roles, etc. Well, I was one of her bridesmaids. My sister didn't want to buy all of the bridesmaids dresses as she wanted us to contrast and feel comfortable in our dresses. But one thing she let us know was that the bridesmaids were to wear white dresses. A few weeks later, I went bridesmaid dress shopping. I really care about my sister so I put a lot of thought and time into choosing my dress, hoping that it would be okay for her wedding. I found this beautiful lace corset, long white dress. This dress was expensive around 1500 British pounds, and the boutique had a no return policy unless the dress was broken or ripped, meaning once I'd bought it, I couldn't return it. So I decided to be the smart person and have my sister come round to the boutique to see me in the dress the next day. My sister was overjoyed. She exclaimed that she loved the dress and it was perfect for her wedding. She insisted that I should buy it, so I bought it for 1500 pounds. I was the first bridesmaid to get their dress. All of my sister's friends seemed uh, almost a little too laid back. A week before the wedding comes and I wake up to texts and calls from my sister, friends and family. Most of the ones from friends and family were letting me know my sister had the talk. I open my sister's texts and see, change of plans, I don't want the bridesmaids wearing white. White is for the bride and all the other bridesmaids are now wearing teal, please buy another dress, thanks, sister. My heart literally sank. I didn't have enough money to buy another dress after the money I spent on that dress. I let my sister and family know this and attended the wedding, but everyone was giving me dirty looks and stares, especially the groom. My sister was infuriated with me afterwards and my entire family's ignoring me. So am I the jerk? I think OP is definitely not the jerk here. Maybe there's a commentary to be had on the necessity of buying a 1500 pound non-returnable dress for a bridesmaid situation, but that's neither here nor there when they were told explicitly that it was fine, perfect, beautiful, so they go and they get it, and then are immediately told, hey actually sorry, forget everything I told you. That's not OP's fault. And our final story of the day is from Mammoth Middle 2910. Am I the jerk for a dry wedding and telling someone he has an alcohol problem? 25 year old female, I'm getting married. My fiance, 25 year old male, and I decided on a dry wedding since we don't drink and see no point in spending money for alcohol. We were debating about getting a cash bar, but then decided to no alcohol at all. There will be a wide range of other drinks, not just juice and soda provided. We informed our guests via invitations with something along the lines of, you don't have to be worried about choosing a driver or paying a taxi since everybody will be able to drive. So a friend, 26 year old male, called me and asked if I was joking about the dry wedding. I denied it. He asked two more times and I still denied joking. Then he asked what was wrong with me and how was he supposed to have fun without alcohol and how he should function that night and that it was not alright to choose a dry wedding. 
This is where I might have been the jerk. I told him that I was not obligated to provide alcohol to him just because he's not able to have fun without it, and that if he needs alcohol so badly and cannot function without it for even one night, with people he knew that he might be having an alcohol problem and should consider a therapy to treat it. He flipped out on me and I took his invitation back until he apologizes because he used many slurs on me. Our friends are divided about me being the jerk. Some say I was right, others say I wasn't right. So Reddit, am I the jerk? How can you be not right about deciding on how you want your wedding to be? If you're having a wedding and you're hosting it and you want a dry wedding, how are you the jerk? Are they saying OP's the jerk for telling somebody that if a person cannot function at a gathering without alcohol that they might have a problem? Because honestly, I agree with OP and I agree with that sentiment and I think OP's not the jerk. What do you guys think? If you're having a wedding, should there be some form of achievable alcohol? Whether it's a cash bar type scenario? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Am I the jerk for not allowing my wife to wash the dog in the kitchen sink? So we have a 4 pound chihuahua, we also have 4 full bathrooms in our house. We were discussing giving the dogs a bath and a walk. My wife suggested that we can wash Romeo in the kitchen sink because he's so small. I said that's disgusting because our dishes go into that sink and food related products. She disagrees. I said dude if I ask Reddit you're going to be roasted. I will not wash the dog in the kitchen sink. Am I the jerk? It might be grody to some, but I don't think it'd be too weird for washing them in the sink. And by the way, hey, I'm Steven, and if you love these hard-hitting Am I the Jerk Here stories, then why not subscribe? That said, our next story is from Throwaway Family 5. Am I the jerk for refusing to stop using my nephew's nickname? Just getting the ages out of the way, I'm 22-year-old male, my nephew's 7, and my brother's 23. I have a special nickname for nephew. I call him Blip. I call him that because he was a tiny baby when he was born, and when I first told him, my dad said, he's barely a blip on your radar. That was a joke because I'm pretty tall and my nephew looked extra tiny when I was holding him. Since then, blip became my nickname for him. I still call him that and he doesn't like it when anyone other than me calls him that. The issue happened earlier today. My siblings, they're technically my step-siblings, but I consider them siblings, and I were visiting my dad and stepmom. I got there at the same time as my brother. I walked in and said hello to everyone. I said, hey Blip, to my nephew. My brother walked in after me and said, hey Blip, to my nephew as well. My nephew didn't like that and politely asked my brother to not call him that. That started an argument between my brother and I that ended with him asking me not to call my nephew Blip anymore. I refused and my brother called me a pompous jerk. The family's pretty split on this. My dad and older sister, my nephew's mom, think I should be allowed to have a special nickname for my nephew, but my stepmom and younger sister think that if they can't call him Blip, then I shouldn't be allowed to either. So am I the jerk for refusing to stop using my nephew's nickname? I think what matters here is keeping what the nephew wants in mind and really trying to take a step back and understanding why the brother is feeling this way or acting that way. I think it's coming from a place of jealousy from the brother that OP has something special or cutesy and they want to be able to have that too but they have none of the history there with that. The nephew clearly stated their wish for everybody but OP to call them something else, and that should be respected because the nephew wants that. OP shouldn't be punished for it, and nor should the connection between OP and their nephew around the name Blip. Wouldn't you guys agree with me? Our next story is from throwaway Unction 93 Am I the jerk for threatening to leave my daughter's wedding because of her rules? I'm 48-year-old male. My daughter's 26-year-old female. Wedding was yesterday. She moved back to our home state of Utah with her fiancé after living in Boston for college and dental school. She does not seem happy to be back here and said that she only moved back because her husband's 28-year-old male company transferred him here. She knows that in our area, families run large. She's one of three kids only because my wife, 47-year-old female, became sick after our youngest but it's not uncommon to have families of eight. When she started planning her wedding, she started worrying about venue capacity and having to spend money on babysitters. For couples with small kids on her list, she made it clear that she could not accommodate kids for or under at this wedding. That caused a lot of ire and we got phone calls asking why. My daughter's rationale was that she thought older kids would enjoy a party more. 
My daughter's younger sister, Ashley, 24-year-old female, has been married for two years and begged her sister to invite her husband's brother and his wife to the wedding too. Ashley's brother-in-law, 41-year-old male, and his wife, 33-year-old female, have five kids, four of whom are under the age of four. When they RSVP'd, they indicated that they'd only be bringing their eight-year-old daughter. I know Ashley's husband's brother well, as he funded my brother's new business and employs Ashley's husband, my son-in-law, in in a job that allows Ashley and him to be full-time parents to their kids. However, that side of the family took a while to warm up to Ashley, as they're wary to newcomers. So the day of the wedding comes, and everybody arrives with the kids they RSVP'd for, and then Ashley's brother-in-law arrives early with all five of their kids in tow. The nanny they have for their kids are not there. My daughter's angry when she hears of this, and their explanation is that their younger kids were upset, and they wanted to be in these wedding pictures too. An argument ensues where my daughter says that they had on-call nannies and just for whatever reason decided this was the event they didn't want to leave their kids for. I look over and Ashley's getting upset and her brother-in-law and sister-in-law won't budge. The toddlers are getting anxious and starting to loudly cry and I finally tell my daughter to just let them in or we'd be here forever. She asked why I was taking their side and I finally say that she either lifts the child-free policy for family or just cancel the wedding because I was done with her rules and leaving. My daughter says, really dad? Way to take sides. She then stormed off and there was a minute where she considered walking down the aisle with her future father-in-law. She ended up relenting but says her wedding is marred by this event. Am I the jerk? I was afraid that this would become the standoff and Ashley would face ire from her in-laws. Our next story is from No Philosopher 716 Am I the jerk for calling my sister's wedding a knockoff of my own? I've always been the favorite among my siblings. As the baby of the family and the only boy, I got doted on a little extra. This extra doting increased when I expressed an interest in dance and actually discovered a talent for it. This makes sense in my mind. My schedule required more time and money devoted to it since I now had to be taken to classes and showcases needed the proper attire, etc. There were a few years of tension between my sisters and I, especially during our teen years, where it seemed like they blamed me for what was going on, or expected me to apologize for our parents' choices, something I adamantly refused to do. Tension seemed to ease some when we went our separate ways. My sisters stuck around in our hometown to get jobs while I moved to a city about an hour away for college. I met my now husband there, and despite what my parents tried to talk us into, we got married in a tiny ceremony at the local courthouse where only immediate family was present. We had a party with our close friends and family later to celebrate, but the ceremony itself was just like we wanted. A small part of an intimate and peaceful day focused on my partner and I. My oldest sister got engaged a couple of months ago, and my parents jumped at the chance to start planning an over-the-top wedding. I've been around for some of it and a lot of what's being offered to the new happy couple is what was suggested to my husband and I when they were trying to convince us to have a big wedding. This didn't bother me at all, in fact, I was happy that my sister was getting what seemed like the wedding of her dreams. Unfortunately, it seems she's still holding a grudge over what happened when we were kids and has made multiple jokes about how she's the favorite now and that this is payback for all the things that she missed out on when I was being chauffeured to dance practice. I took the first few in stride, but it's getting tired now that it's been repeated so many times. I recently told her that the jokes were getting old, but that still didn't stop her. I finally had enough last night and after a few drinks at a little weekend family get together, I told her that her wedding was essentially a knockoff of mine and that I doubted our parents would be putting this much effort in had I gone through with the extravagant plans they wanted me to a few years ago. She left the room in tears and I've gotten mixed reactions from family over what I said. Am I the jerk? I just I feel like OP was baited into stooping to their level. Honestly, I don't know if I really blame them with all the prodding, but I definitely feel like this was one of those situations where you probably just should have took the high road. Honestly, maybe the whole thing is a greater symptom of OP actually having been the favorite child with special treatment. This might legitimately be the first situation where the parents are doting on the other kids as much as they had doted on OP all of their life up to this point. 
Either way, I think signs point to OP being the jerk here. Our next story is from Found Town Pound 123. Am I the jerk for calling the police on my younger sister? I was saving all year for a birthday present for my son, who's turning 14 this year. I was able to get him a bike, and he's been wanting one for a while since he grew out of his old one about a year ago. His birthday is next Friday, and he's been extremely excited. The bike was kept in my parents' garage, and my sister, who's also 14, decided to take it out for a joyride and managed to get it stolen. I told her she had to find it in 24 hours or I'd call the cops. My parents thought I was just trying to scare her, but I really wasn't. I'm a single parent and saved for months just to get it. My sister couldn't find it, so this afternoon I called the police and they've told me they probably won't be able to get the bike back, but my sister will end up getting a slap on the wrist. My parents are mad at me because I have the potential to ruin my sister's life with this. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here because considering the parents' reaction, it just does not seem likely that the younger sister would have any kind of punishment here. And let's be real, considering they're 14 years old, I doubt the law is going to come down very hard on her. But she definitely needs some kind of way to learn that what she did here was awful. And using the legal system in that way is probably the only way they would have really have been held accountable. Or at least have their eyes opened to how awful it was and the ramifications for doing so. Our next story is from ToastWJelly657. Am I the jerk for asking my mother and father-in-law to choose between their two daughter-in-laws? Right before I was about to leave for my mother and father-in-law's house, I got a phone call from my husband. Husband was extremely upset and asked me if I'd left for his parents yet. I said no, and he told me he needed to make me aware of a situation. A few hours before, his father called him and shared with him screenshots of a dating app profile containing my name and photos. Before I could say anything, my husband reassured me he knew it was fake. A few things that tipped him off. One, the screenshots from my profile said less than a mile away, when referring to the distance of the user. Two, it was my sister-in-law who found the account. My straight, female, and married sister-in-law just randomly decided to go on Bumble and somehow fell upon my profile, even though we live over 100 miles apart. When I got to mother and father-in-law's house, father-in-law rushed out to talk to me. He told me I had every right to be upset, but asked me to be the bigger person and not cause any more unnecessary drama. When I got to sister-in-law, initially she denied everything, but after about two minutes, she couldn't keep her story straight. Instead of apologizing, she just started bawling her eyes out. She blamed the whole thing on pregnancy hormones and tried to play it off as a joke. My mother and father-in-law both pulled me outside to try and get me to calm down. I asked them why they were taking her side. They told me there were no sides and they were just trying to keep the peace. After they said that, I lost it and told them keeping the peace is just an excuse used by enablers. I told them that they had a very important decision to make. If they chose to stand by sister-in-law, they'll lose me as a consequence. They told me they were afraid to lose their grandchild and I responded with, You're going to lose a set of grandchildren either way. It's either going to be the ones in front of you now or the future grandchildren me and husband will have. My husband and I are on the same page and we've both agreed to cut contact with his family unless some kind of just consequence for sister-in-law happens. I definitely don't think OP's the jerk here. It's kind of easy to try to argue, oh well, you shouldn't punish the grandparents here, the the father and mother-in-law. But the heart of the issue is they're not acknowledging what sister-in-law did, and like OP kind of said, they're pretty much enabling it. If they can't even look you in the eyes and recognize that what they did was wrong and agree that some punishment is necessary, I mean, what's stopping you from just outright saying they're supporting that behavior then? Our next story is from Inksy617. Am I the jerk for telling of my existence to my siblings despite my stepmother's wishes? therefore causing a big fight between them and then refusing to help stepmother divert the blame? Where do I even begin? I'm 18 year old female. My dad married my stepmom Rose when I was about two years old. He died when I was six because of cancer. At the time, my little brother Austin was two and she was pregnant with my sister Alyssa. She promised my dad that she would take care of me when he's gone. After my dad died, Rose left me to foster care. She told me she can't take care of me right now, but after her baby's born, she'll be back for me. But she didn't come back. 
As I got older, I reached out to her, so did my social worker. She refused to allow me to see my siblings. I did this every year, and she refused every year. After turning 18, I reached out to Rose again, and she told me I'm a stranger. Her children don't even know I exist, and they have each other. They don't need me, and she wants to keep it that way. She told me to go look for my mom's relatives if I want family, that her and her children are not my family. It wasn't a pleasant meeting. A few days later, I said to myself, screw it, I do exist, I'm a real person, I'll go and tell my siblings myself. I talked to Austin's best friend, found her on social media, and told her everything. Had lots of pictures and documents as well. Once she was convinced, she invited Austin and Alyssa over, and I met them and told them everything. I had a lot of pictures, including some of me and him together when he was a baby, also of me and my dad and Rose as well, also a few with me with my dad on his final days, which they said Rose had shown them very similar pictures, but I wasn't in any of them. It was very emotional, but they were angry. Especially Austin because he always felt like something was wrong but couldn't put it together. Rose had always told them it was because their dad had died. Anyway, they called their grandma, Rose's mom, and she confessed as well. Told them she wanted to tell them the truth but Rose had threatened that she would cut off contact if she did. They eventually went home and confronted their mom and all heck broke loose. Rose was initially furious with me, even called the police. They dismissed her after talking to Austin and Alyssa called me and said some very nasty things about me, my mom, and my dad's mom for some reason too. They're both passed away. Anyway, I talked to my siblings a few more times, and a couple of days later, Rose called me again and told me she's happy to let me see my siblings and have a real relationship. She lost the war with Austin and Alyssa and invited me over. I went there and had a good day with them. Then she asked me to help her make amends with the kids to tell them that her not telling them about me was a mutual decision between her, my social worker, and my dad, because they all believed it would be best. She wants this so that she can move on and for the kids to stop blaming her. So far, I've refused. Am I the jerk for what I did, telling my siblings the truth, and what I continued to do, refusing to help her blame my dead dad for this, basically? Absolutely not the jerk. It's great that OP finally was able to punch through. Sadly, it was so long, so late compared to what it should have been. OP has nothing to feel bad about, nothing to apologize for, and hopefully they can grow together with their family. Also, it's hilarious that they try to call the cops. For what? There's not a charge in the book for what OP did. Our next story is from Teban23. Am I the jerk for taking in two children from a bad home without my husband's approval? I, 28-year-old female, have been married to my husband, 28-year-old male, for five years, and we've been together since high school. We have one daughter together, Erin, 10-year-old female, who is severely autistic. Our family situation isn't ideal and has put a strain on our relationship with both each other and our child. My husband works in the Navy and is usually gone for six to nine months at a time. This means I'm left alone to look after Erin, which is extremely difficult as she's essentially non-verbal, has ARFID, etc. I love my daughter and I wouldn't change her for the world, but it can still be very stressful and my husband doesn't always understand that. I don't have many friends and live far away from family, so life can feel very difficult and lonely. When my cousin, 37-year-old female, got in touch to reconnect, it felt like an answered prayer. However, I found out that she was battling alcoholism and neglecting her two children, Mia, 16-year-old female, and Corey, 6-year-old female. I reported the incident to CPS and got emergency custody. Their father's not in the picture, and at this point, my husband was very supportive. The girls and my daughter became very close. I have never, ever seen my daughter love or trust someone as quickly as she did with Mia and Corey. Mia is a very maternal soul and Corey, although young, is fascinated by Aaron. I've never seen a child so young be so inclusive and accepting of my daughter and her needs. I truly believe these girls were sent to us. I now have full custody of them and their mother's still drinking. I may not have given birth to these girls, but they're as much of my daughters as Aaron. They're the first friends Aaron has ever had as other children tend to be intimidated by her and her needs, and seeing them all get along so well warms my mama heart. My husband doesn't feel the same. 
When I originally told him that I applied for full custody, he was angry and told me that that was not my decision to make, that it's his house too and I shouldn't go adopting children wherever I find them, and hung up. I can understand where he's coming from, but I'm not asking him to adopt them. I'm asking him to respect the fact that they need us and that I'm not going to give up on them like their parents did. When he came home for Christmas last year, he completely blinked them and pretended they didn't exist. He would also frequently say to our daughter that she was the only child he was ever going to love or need, right in front of them, which was just cruel. On top of that, he barely spoke to me the whole time either. His behavior really hurt them, and they're terrified of Christmas. My husband and I rarely speak, and there's a part of me that wonders if we're better off separate, but I know the girls will think it's their fault. I feel like I'm the jerk for bringing these girls into his life, but I would have also have been a jerk if I'd done nothing. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk for bringing them in under the emergency situation, but when OP shifts this to a more permanent solution, without ever respecting or understanding or concerning the husband and their wants and needs, then yeah, I think it does make OP the jerk. It doesn't make OP a bad person, and honestly bless them for looking out for these kids and also fostering a situation that's good for their biological child. But if the husband doesn't want the kids, they have every right for that, and it might cause a rift in that relationship. Our next story is from Flashy Focus 4824. Am I the jerk for asking my daughter-in-law to stop making social media posts that make me look bad? I have a son, Ryan, male 22. Ryan has a wife, Holly, female 22. They got married and moved in together around four months ago after dating for three years. I'm really happy for them. There's just a small problem though. Holly has recently started making posts on social media with jokes about how horrible mother-in-laws are all the time. When seeing them, I thought I did something to upset Holly. I asked her about it, and she insisted that I hadn't upset her and that she just post them because she thinks they're funny. I asked Ryan about it, and he said that Holly never seemed upset at me and told me I'm overthinking it, but Holly keeps making these posts. The rest of my family's even been asking me if everything's okay between me, Ryan, and Holly because they've seen the posts too. The last straw was when Holly made a post about arguments with monsters in law. Now everyone in my family thinks I argued with Holly when that didn't even happen. I asked Holly about it again and she said that once again she just posted it because she thought it was funny, not actually anything personal to me. I told Holly that she's making me uncomfortable and she's making the family think I'm being horrible to her. Holly said that's not her problem and that people need to learn how to take a joke. I asked Holly to please stop making these posts because people aren't going to interpret them that way. Holly said I'm being unreasonable and told me I can't tell her what to do and said I'm a bossy jerk. Well, I think when you're 22 years old you can very often still be a very childish 22 and I feel like it's pretty apparent Holly is. I kind of see their side where they're just posting stuff that they think is funny but they don't realize the consequence of what they're posting is making somebody, I wouldn't say get harassed, but they're gonna kind of poison the well of their family's opinions about OP because, well, how else does it look? It might cause a flare up, but I feel like if I was in OP situation, I would have some like write up explanation paragraph to leave as a comment on every single one of these posts explaining that it has nothing to actually do with OP and that they haven't fought and that they've even asked these kinds of jokes to stop being shared. It might cause an argument, sure, but it might also help save OP's public opinion amongst their family. This next story is from Specific Main 5699. Am I the jerk for canceling the family vacation because my husband gave our kids tickets to his widowed cousin's kids? Me, female 33, and my husband Chris, male 36, planned a one-week vacation to an out-of-state ski resort with our two kids. His cousin Martin, male 38, lost his wife to cancer six months ago. She left behind two kids nearly the same age as my kids, six and nine. My husband is devastated for his best friend's loss. They're so close that he sees them as a friend. Understandably so, he tries to help Martin and kids, but in my opinion, he's been doing a little too much for them lately. He suggested that we take Martin's kids with us to the resort to get their mind off the grief a bit. I apologized and said it wouldn't since we barely have budget to cover for our kids. 
He insisted and then tried offering compromises, but I still said it wouldn't work. He was obviously pissed, but dropped it eventually. Two days before the trip, I found out that my husband booked two tickets for Martin's kids instead of our own kids. I was the one paying, but he insisted on handling the booking and making reservations. I was stunned. I called him out on it and he apologetically talked about how Martin needs some alone time away from the kids, how the kids need a breather and how they need this vacation more than our kids do. I flipped out at him, asking if he was seriously okay with prioritizing other kids over his own. He said it wasn't about priorities, but doing what's needed to help those kids out. I asked how his own kids will react once they find out, but he said, I'm sure they'd understand. I said no and decided to cancel the vacation altogether. He freaked out on me saying that I can't do that and make him look small in front of his cousin and family, since they praised him for this nice gesture. I refused to negotiate it, but he called me horribly selfish and cruel towards grieving kids and said that he'll make sure our own kids know how I'm behaving towards the other kids by robbing them of the fun they so much need and deserve. We haven't been talking and he's so pissed and keeps throwing a fit after fit about it, claiming I ruined it for everybody when I cancelled. I feel bad for the kids, I do, but I don't think what he did was right. Am I the jerk for cancelling? I don't think OP's the jerk. This is obviously a terrible thing for those kids and you want to help out however you can? But cancelling these plans or giving away your plans to them is just unfair. If that husband really wants to do something, have them stay away from the vacation, have them do something with the kids and take them out on the town or whatever, and all of a sudden I bet, what's that? They don't want to stay back from the vacation? No surprise there. Guess they don't care enough and they're horribly selfish and cruel. Our next story is from ThrowRA31133434. Am I the jerk for publicly uninviting my fiancé's best friend from the wedding over a joke he made? I wonder if I'm overreacting, but we'll see here. I, female 30, used to be a SNX worker. Now, I'm not proud of myself for what I did, but I don't go hard on myself either because circumstances were impossible at the time, and I did what I had to do to support my family and myself. My fiancé, male 33, is completely aware of every single aspect of my past, and he doesn't judge me at all for it. His friend, his best friend, however, tends to throw in some backhanded remarks about my past and says he's just joking. He's prone to making jokes about people's personal lives and, apparently, everybody's okay with it. They call it good sport. Last night, my fiancé took me to dinner with his family and his best friend was there. We had dinner and started talking about the wedding, which will take place next month. My fiancé said something about the budget being tight, and his friend said, Not so sure about this whole wedding thing, since you might find yourself paying for SNX later on, despite having the legal rights to it. I was blown away, truly blown away by what he said. I really wanted to let it go, but since my in-laws laughed, I blew up at him and called him an idiot. He was like, relax, it was a joke, didn't you get it? Well, it's your problem then. My fiancé tried to calm me down after I stood up, but I got more pissed and told his friend publicly that he was uninvited from the wedding, took my stuff, and went home. My fiancé came back and was flipping out at me, saying it was a joke, and I had no right to uninvite his best friend from the wedding like that. I pointed out how his friend's joke wasn't really a joke, but he said that I should quit being oversensitive and taking stuff too personally and seriously. We argued and he said it's his wedding too and that I was being controlling and moody. I broke down crying and he accused me of using tears as manipulation to get the upper hand in the argument. I packed and went to stay with mom. My future mother-in-law tried calling me to tell me how I'm trying to drive a wedge between her son and his friend by uninviting him from the wedding. I refused to speak to her on that but my fiance and her are clearly upset and think I overreacted. I think OP is definitely not the jerk, and I would take this as not only enough evidence to question inviting the friend to the wedding, but also enough to question the wedding itself. Because clearly the fiancé is on a different side than OP, and I think OP is more than justified. And our final story of the day is from Redford Junction 3654. Am I the jerk for not picking up long distance relationship boyfriend from the airport? My boyfriend and I are in a long distance relationship. 
He typically comes to visit me once a month. I admittedly haven't gone to see him since I don't love spending time in his town. Recently he came to visit. I told him that I'd meet him at my home and offer to pay for his Uber. When we met up, he told me that he was disappointed that I haven't ever picked him up from the airport, that it made him feel a bit unloved because I haven't gone to see him at his home. I told him it was a lot of work to drive down to the airport and it was out of the way from my office and home and that it was most convenient for him to take an Uber, which I'd offer to pay for. He seemed really saddened by and anxious about that, and said that it was important to him to spend as much time as possible together when visiting, because it only happens once a month. I told him I was sorry that he was upset, but that it wasn't fair of him to get mad at me for not meeting needs he didn't communicate until now. The conversation ended soon after that, and he went home. Am I the jerk for not picking up long distance relationship boyfriend from airport? Our next story is from AITA No Sister. Am I the jerk for telling my dad that if something happens to him and his wife, I wouldn't take my half sister? I'm 26 year old female. My mom passed away a few years ago. During that time, we discovered that my dad had been cheating on her with a girl my age. His whole family disowned him and cut contact with him, except for me. I guess that at that time, I wasn't ready to let go of both my parents at the same time. But over these last five years, I've been able to gradually let go to the point that I only see him, them, twice or thrice a month. It's like I have no family left. Don't get me wrong, I also blame the girl for what happened, but the responsibility towards my mom and me was my dad's, not her. They eventually had my half-sister, four-year-old female, and for what I've heard and know, My dad and his wife are living paycheck by paycheck, on a budget and in a rental home, since everyone in the family changed the will, both my grandparents and my mom. My dad didn't get the house because it was an eventual inheritance for my grandparents, but since she died first, I'm solely the benefactor from both sides, since my paternal grandparents skipped my dad. Now, two days ago, I went to visit him because it was his birthday, and he said he and his wife wanted to talk to me. I was like, okay. They said that they wanted me to be the legal guardian of my half-sister in case something happened to them, mainly because I'll have the means for it. My dad's wife's parents are able to care for her, but to an extent only, and that I'll have the needed money to take care of an innocent child. I said no, not for the money, but because I just don't wanna. I'm not close to my sister, and currently I don't see nor want myself taking care of a child, much less the reminiscent of my mom's last heartbreak. I said that I was willing to pass a monthly check, like a child support payment, but less than that since she's not my kid. But that was the only thing I was willing to do. My dad cried, saying that she was his baby and I was able to be a good sister like I was raised to, but I just laughed and said that he was no one to talk about goods and wrongs and he and his wife should have thought of that before cheating. His wife called me a monster and kicked me out of the house. I left. Later that night, I sent my dad a text informing him of my decision to cut ties with him completely, and that from now on, will be no contact unless it's an emergency. He's begging me to reconsider, but I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I don't think OP's the jerk. If it's not your kid, it's not your kid, and if you don't want to take care of somebody else's kid, half-sibling or not, you don't have any legal responsibility to do so. And especially considering OP's background with who the kid and the mother are to OP, personally, I especially don't blame them. Honestly, considering all the circumstances, wouldn't you say that it would be more shocking if somebody was open to being legal guardian? Our next story is from Gina Stun. Am I the jerk for kicking out my boyfriend's homeless friend? So my, female 22, boyfriend, 24, has this friend, female 25, who moved in four months ago because she had nowhere to go. Now, I didn't mind having her as long as she respects our boundaries and the rules around the house but that's definitely not it. She's very loud, comments on everything, and just does inappropriate stuff in general, and excuses it for being a Latina, and that's just how they are. She doesn't help at all, besides maybe cooking sometimes, but doesn't clean up the mess she makes, and she invites people over whenever she wants. She changes in the living room in front of us, literally took off her underwear, and I asked her to change in her room, but her excuse is she was trying to feel like home. And then she suggested I should do it too as it'll strengthen my bond with my boyfriend. I talked to my boyfriend about how I'm kind of uncomfortable with this whole situation. 
and he told me not to overthink about it and that she's just very unbothered and cool. She always interrupted our time together and would sit between me and him during a movie or take my space while I take a toilet break. And she cuddles him in the most unfriendly way. And when I asked jokingly if she was trying to take my man, she would excuse it on her ethnicity and that's how they grew up. So I knew I had to ruin this Friday night they had for them. I went up to them and she was all over him as usual. I called my boyfriend and when he was about to get up, she said how it was their favorite part and he could leave later. I insisted but she kept pulling him. So I went and pulled him to our room discussed how what she's doing is really upsetting and I no longer want her living with us and he agreed I had the right but that she has nowhere to go and that I'll have to wait until she finds a job which she's not even trying to get. While talking she came and tried to open the door which was locked so she started knocking and we just ignored her until it got louder and then started saying how I ruined the only time that she gets with him which is obviously not the case. I had enough at that point but my boyfriend suggested he talks to her first. So he went and they took too long, like almost two hours. And I went to check on them and heard her telling him that he shouldn't accept someone who ruins a friendship as a partner. And that's a big red flag and that he should kick me out. But this place is actually my property that I inherited from my aunt. And at that point, I knew I had to kick her out. I didn't even ask what the conclusion they came up with was and waited in the living room until they came out and I just told her to look for another place and gave her two weeks max. She's been crying since yesterday, refusing to eat and not coming out of the room and my boyfriend saying I went overboard and I just hit a sensitive spot of hers, basically telling her to leave when she has no family or anywhere to go. So am I the jerk? I think OP's clearly not the jerk. And I think if anybody was actually desperate for a place to stay, they would be extremely respectful of somebody's rules. At least if they cared about staying there. And I mean, I'm not one to judge anybody's relationships, but it would be really hard for me if I was in OP's position to feel like the boyfriend wasn't cheating. I mean, there's just no way trying to use their culture as a justification or not that they should have allowed them to be that close to them considering both their relationship and OP's expressed discomfort. OP's not even getting respected here. Should they kick both of them to the curb? Sure seems like they got a lot of history together. Our next story is from Astrid901. Am I the jerk for telling my ex's family where he was after he asked to see me two years after he disappeared? My ex and I were together since we were 15 until he just disappeared one day without any explanation. His family have spent thousands trying to track him down without any luck. And there's been radio silence from him for two years. He finally broke his silence and called me a month ago. I was really, really, really angry at him. But he kept telling me he missed me and wanted to see me, so I agreed to meet up with him. His family have always been like a second family to me, so I've stayed in contact with them. And the closer it got to the day I was supposed to see him the more guilty I felt for not telling them, so I did. His dad and grandfather ended up going with me to see him, and my ex was really upset with me for not coming alone. We talked, and then they talked to him privately, and now he's back, but he's still upset with me even though he seemed to have resolved whatever issue he had with his family that made him leave. Am I the jerk? I think the one thing I've always heard the most is in situations where somebody goes missing, the most valuable thing you can have is at least closure, just knowing what happened and why. So after two years of nothing, out of the blue, suddenly being able to give that family that's been desperately searching for years closure? I don't think I could blame them for that, even if it does go against the wishes of the person who ran away. Plus, somebody turning up out of the blue and asking to see you alone is kind of scary, so I wouldn't have even blamed them of having another person come with them. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Interumza. Am I the jerk for telling my sister that she can find somewhere else to stay if she can't take seeing my daughter? I, 27-year-old female, have a 5-year-old foster daughter named May. She's been with me for around 8 months now, and I love her to pieces. I'm considering adopting her even. My sister, 31-year-old female, Kate, recently suffered a miscarriage, and it took a real toll on her marriage. 
She's getting divorced from her husband and has been staying with me because she can't bear to live with him right now. Kate, however, has been a horrible guest to May. Every time May asks her for something or talks to her, Kate will burst into tears or yell at her. Kate is a great sister to me and I understand that she's grieving, but that doesn't mean that she can lash out at May for simply existing. I've told her off multiple times for yelling at May, but it all came to a head when I confronted her this morning. May had asked Kate if she could move so she could get to the snack cabinet. Kate snapped at her to wait for a darn second brat. I overheard from the living room and made Kate move out of the way and told her to apologize to May. Kate burst into tears, saying that she just couldn't take having May here as a reminder of what she's lost. I told her she is a grown adult and should know better than to bully a child for her own problems. I told May to go to her room real quick, and Kate and I got into a huge argument, and I ended up telling her if she couldn't take seeing my foster daughter, she could find somewhere else to stay. She left to our parents' house and told them everything. I've been getting messages from her all day now. She tells me I'm a horrible sister and said that she was grieving and asked how I could put someone else's kid over hers, which I think is a disgusting thing to send to anyone. Personally, I think she's being insensitive to me and my daughter's relationship. According to my mom, she's been crying for hours and won't stop talking about how I'm such a monster for not thinking of her feelings. Am I the jerk? I just don't think she has a right to yell at my kid because she's lost hers. I don't think OP's the jerk at all here, and sometimes it sucks to not really get the response you want in a situation like this, but maybe the important thing to focus on is that she is grieving, and instead of letting it just continue to upset you, maybe the best foot forward is just just trying to direct them towards some kind of therapy option. But I think Opie's totally on the money with she's a grown adult and despite her having her own problems that she can't lash out at a kid, that kind of behavior definitely should not be around May. I just would hope that for Opie's sister's sake that they could actually get some help in moving past these feelings. Our next story is from Square Original 1311. Am I the jerk for putting dirty dishes away? So I, 16 year old female, can admit that when it comes to chores, I've never had too many responsibilities. I have to take the dog out for a minimum of 15 minutes a day, keep my room clean, and put away the dishes. My mom, 39-year-old female, always does the dishes. Recently, my stepdad, 42-year-old male, fixed our dishwasher and we've been using it instead to make things easier. The first time we used the dishwasher, I started putting things away and found a glass had broken. No big deal. Second time, some of the things had visible food and such still on them. I put them in the sink, assuming they would just get redone, and I'd put them away the next time. I'd been doing this for about a week, putting a few utensils, maybe a cup that had visible food, when my mom finally talked to me. She said I needed to do my chores right and stop putting things in the sink just so I can go back to my phone quicker. I said that the only time I ever put things in the sink was because they were still dirty. She said that was garbage and I needed to stop or else she would take my phone for a bit. The next day, as I was putting away the dishes, I saw that some forks and spatulas were still somewhat dirty and then a mug, my mom's favorite, had some dishwasher gunk inside. Doing as my mom told me, I put everything away. When she came to the kitchen, I sat at the dinner table and watched as she grabbed the spatula and noticed it was dirty but just sighed and put it in the sink. After, she went to grab her mug and when she saw it was full of dishwasher gunk, she looked over to me and asked what I thought I was doing and I kindly said that I just put away all the dishes. She blew up and said that if something was obviously dirty, I should put it in the sink and not put it away. I pointed out the flaws in her argument. After that, she took my phone for the day. I don't think I really did anything wrong, but I want to know, am I the jerk? I think if OP's job is solely put away the dishes that they're not the jerk. If their job is do the dishes and they're actually putting stuff in the dishwasher and they're coming out dirty, then they would be the jerk, but it doesn't seem to me like that's the case here. If their job was put away the dishes, I don't really see how you could make OP the jerk. You certainly could make the mom the jerk though for not being willing to listen to their kid. Our next story is from Waka Laka Time. Am I the jerk for putting my husband's fancy knives through the dishwasher? So I, 28 year old female, have on occasion put my husband's, 28-year-old male, dirty knives through the dishwasher despite him asking me not to. 
These knives are extra sharp for cooking, and apparently the dishwasher will blunt them. I am terrified of knives to the point where, if I see them on the work surfaces, I will begin to panic. My husband's aware of this, and I never use these particular knives as I know I'm not allowed to dishwasher them. I can't face cleaning a knife by hand. If I have to use one, I'll use one of my old knives that I put through the dishwasher. Now, my husband will use his fancy knives and leave them dirty either in the sink or on the worktop. They can be there for days, and just the thought of them being out terrifies me. I can't face cleaning them by hand, so I put them in the dishwasher to get them out of my sight. He is free at any point prior to the wash cycle to remove and clean them by hand. He thinks I'm the jerk for putting them in, despite him asking me not to. I think he's the jerk for leaving out dirty knives, despite him being aware of my fear. We're actually a really good team and barely disagree on anything, but this seems to be an obstacle we cannot agree on. I need internet strangers to tell me who's in the wrong, if anyone. Please and thank you. I think both sides are kind of at fault here. This is a bit of both sides having expressed their disappointments with what the other is doing, and then both not doing anything to fix either side. This is a real chicken in the egg, am I the jerk here story. This next story is from Rival X Games. Am I the jerk for calling my grandparents out in my wedding speech? So just for some background context, my parents eloped because my mom was a teenage mom and her parents were not chill about it. So to stand in solidarity, my dad agreed and told my grandparents, the ones this post is about, that they weren't going to have a wedding and only have two witnesses. Jump 30 years and now I was getting married. My entire life I was told this story from every angle so I felt that with bringing both sets of grandparents together, it would finally close this off and put a nice ribbon on the situation. My grandparents say they're coming and everything seems great. Jump to about a month before the wedding and my grandparents tell my dad, not me, that they would not be coming and instead would be going to Scotland for vacation. The only explanation they gave was that this may be their last chance to go. Note, this is not the first time they've gone to Scotland. So when it came time to be giving my wedding speech, I gave the obvious thank yous and whatnot, and then said, we thank those for coming, and for those who couldn't, thank you for at least staying in the country. My uncle, their other son, let them know this was said, and now they're giving me the cold shoulder, and my uncle thinks I should apologize. My family and my wife have agreed with me that it was a tame thing to say, and I could have been a lot worse. What do you guys think? Am I the jerk? I think it might be slightly petty, but I don't think OP's the jerk because this isn't like they had some Scotland vacation planned ahead of time. This was clearly something where they knew the wedding was coming, they said they were going to attend, and they didn't even tell OP that they were canceling. I don't know if they're just, like, too ashamed of themselves to have even mentioned it to OP. But considering all of that, I don't blame OP. And besides, only people who are in the know would know. Our next story is from Ambitious Mammoth 937 Am I the jerk for causing a family rift over a water bottle? My son, 9-year-old male, is very particular with food and drink. He doesn't like the food touching each other on a plate, and under no circumstances will he allow anyone to drink out of his bottle. I used to be the same way with my food and I still don't like anyone drinking out of my bottle so I get it. I grew out of the food issue, I assume he will too. Anyway, moving on, my brother, 30 year old male, has a daughter, 2 year old female. We were both visiting our parents. My son comes running into the kitchen crying because my brother had given his daughter my son's drink bottle because he didn't bring hers. So I told my brother that my son doesn't share his bottle so he can't give it to her. There's a shop just down the road that sells bottles. He could have easily have gone for a short walk to get one, or God forbid, use a cup. My brother then bends down to my son and tells him that his daughter can't drink because of him. I saw red. I told him that he is completely out of order, and he can't blame my son and tell him that he's causing this problem because he forgot to bring his daughter's drink bottle. We argued, I want to take the bottle back. He snatched it away from me and threw the bottle over a large fence. Am I the jerk for the way I reacted? Should I have just let her have the juice bottle? He's not the type of person to let this go and I will absolutely suffer for this for years to come. No over exaggeration. Also my niece had been in the house for approximately 5 minutes. I wouldn't have let her dehydrate. Absolutely not the jerk here. I'm still the same way where 
I probably wouldn't share a drink or a bottle with just about anyone. I mean, maybe if you waterfall a drink of mine or something, sure, but I'm right in the same camp as this nine-year-old where unless you're giving this bottle to them to drink and then immediately washing it with some soap, it's kind of gross. I think the only person I would share a drink with would be a partner of mine. Is that weird? Our next story is from Frustrated Broke Leg. Am I the jerk? Blamed boyfriend for making me late because he wouldn't help. My family and I got into a road accident a few weeks ago. Everyone's fine, but I broke my leg in two places. The doctor gave me the okay to go back to school. I'm 17 year old female in a bunch of AP classes and have a lot of books I have to carry with me. It's hard going between my locker to class because it's hard to manage a heavy backpack with crutches and a bulky cast. Last Tuesday, one of my classes ran late. I was with my boyfriend Josh, who shares both classes with me. Josh is a heavy guy who prides himself on being unathletic, because why need sports when you have video games? We're running to the next class. I can't keep up because crutches and a heavy backpack make it freaking hard. I asked Josh if he could help me carry some of my books. He said he can't because he can't carry my books plus his. I end up late to class by 10 minutes when Josh was on time. Miss Sanchez, my teacher, was chastising me for being late, and I snapped. Well, if Josh wasn't so out of shape and would help me, I wouldn't be late. I got detention for talking back to the teacher, and my friends and classmates think I'm a jerk for fat shaming Josh. Josh says I'm unfair to him because I know he's out of shape and can't help me. I'm just sick of being let down by him all the time. Am I the jerk? Or should I try to be more understanding? I think OP is wholeheartedly the jerk. I'm personally of the opinion that I don't care if Josh is fat and proud of it. Like I don't care if this dude is huge and is outwardly like, I shovel as much food into my mouth as I can and I don't want to lift a finger. It's not his responsibility to carry your books, whether they're heavy or you have a lot of them or not. And to call him out like that in front of everybody in this class and somehow try to pin this on him? It's just crazy to me. Honestly, the way OP acted, I completely forgot until I re-looked it over just now that Josh is apparently OP's boyfriend. That's a cold, cold way to act and talk about somebody that you say is your partner. Our next story is from throwaway 27 cousin. Am I the jerk for what I said to my cousin after I upstaged her at her wedding? I'm 22 year old female. My cousin, 23 year old female, got married weeks ago. Between the two of us, she was always the prettier one. I don't care really, I never cared about how I look. The only time I actually make some effort to look good is for special occasions like weddings. So for my cousin's wedding, I put on some makeup and got a cute dress. When the wedding started and we saw her, Well, I think it was the excessive use of makeup, but she didn't look pretty at all. Since she got back from her honeymoon, she hasn't been talking to me at all, which was weird because we were always close. I finally got tired, so last night when we met at our grandparents' home, I asked her what's wrong with her and she snapped at me and said I upstaged her in her wedding. I got angry and asked her what she wanted me to do, and she said I did it on purpose because I never care about my looks, but I had to make myself look pretty in her wedding. This is where I might be the jerk, because I was angry. So I told her, what do you want me to do? You look like a freaking clown. I would have looked better than you if I came to your wedding wearing my pajamas. She called me a jerk and left. I understand why OP blew up considering the cousin was coming at them like that, but I think both sides were jerks and I think both sides went too far with this. Unless OP's wearing white or some like priceless extremely extravagant dress, you can't say somebody's upstaging them because they wore makeup. But I also think OP just went a little too far with the arguing. This next story is from Comfortable Form 1351. Am I the jerk for telling my dad and his family that my son's name is none of their business? My wife, Bryony, 29-year-old female, and I, 30-year-old male, had our little boy last week. He's our first child. When Bri was pregnant, we had talked about names and she knew I would love to name our child, we didn't know the sex, after my mom, who passed when I was 8 years old. My mom's name works as a unisex name, and we both loved a nickname for it, so we decided to go ahead with that as his first name. We didn't announce the name until he was born, though we told my maternal grandparents beforehand. My dad and I are not all that close. We've had our differences over the years and one of those has come up again. How controlling he is. 
It was always there, but came up after he and his wife Jana had my half-sister. There was a whole argument about me being present for the birth, because Jana's kids were going to be my siblings. How he saw it as a great bonding moment and important for me to witness. There was also stuff like, don't mention mom around Jana or her kids, don't speak to my maternal family members if Jana or her kids are in the house, don't skip college and go for an apprenticeship, that's not what our family does, don't move out at 18 if you're staying in town. He also tried to dictate mine and Bri's wedding. So fast forward to now, my dad brings the whole family over to meet my son, and as soon as they hear the name, it becomes clear they are not happy. My dad and his stepson tell me, unless we'd name a future daughter Jana, then my son's name should not be after my mom. Jana tells me how uncomfortable the name makes her. Her daughter, not my half-sister, but her daughter from a different relationship, tells me the name takes my son right out of their family and places a wall up. My half-siblings say it's weird for him to be named after someone who isn't part of the family. This is all coming at me, and I had to get loud for them to stop. I told them my son's name is none of their business and if they don't like it, they don't need to be part of his life. Cue arguing from everyone and I make them leave. My dad called back the next day alone and told me I was a jerk for saying my son's name was none of their business and that they didn't have to be in his life. He said I'm doing everything to make them feel like they don't matter and they aren't family to me. He demanded I change the name. I told him to go to heck and stay away from us. Am I the jerk? I think OP is clearly not the jerk. Put your foot down here over this situation because they don't deserve to dictate your life or your son's life. And our final story of the day is from UIUC throwaway blah. Am I the jerk for telling my friend's girlfriend I thought she was a little fat? My best friend Nick, 22 year old male, his girlfriend Marta, 22 year old female, and I, 21 year old male, were hanging out in his basement after smoking a bowl together. She asked him unprompt, babe. Do you think I'm fat? Nick, being the dutiful boyfriend, responded, Of course not, babe. She then turned to me and asked, OP, do you think I'm fat? Now here's the thing. I strive to be a very candid person. I will not hesitate to speak my truth, because I believe it's almost always better to be frank with people than to tiptoe around what you actually feel. In my experience, avoiding the truth often leads to confusion and or pain. Of course, I don't want to be a jerk, so if I'm going to say something that I think could be taken poorly, I try to be as nice as possible while also remaining candid. Back to the basement. I don't find Marta very fat. I definitely wouldn't call her obese or anything, but a little chubby? Yes, I knew if I told her this directly, she'd probably get upset. So I asked her in response, Do you want my honest opinion? She said she did, so I gave it. My exact words were, I'd like to preface this by saying that it in no way affects how I view you as a person. I don't think that weight is a good measure of who someone is. That being said, a little bit, yes. She got really quiet and it was kind of awkward. I was about to leave anyway, so I went home soon after. Later, Nick texts me saying I really upset Marta and I owe her an apology for what I said. I don't think I did anything wrong. The way I see it, she asked for my honest opinion, and I gave it. Just because she didn't like what my opinion was doesn't mean I was wrong to give it. Fishing for compliments doesn't always go the way you want it to. I've gone to other impartial friends, both men and women, to get their opinions and they've been pretty split. So I'm asking Reddit, am I the jerk? I'm conflicted here because it's very clearly a situation where they wanted a very specific answer, they're obviously fishing for compliments. Would it have been better to just try to dodge the situation altogether rather than give any answer? I don't know, but at the end of the day, I feel like you can't deny that they did ask OP. OP asked, do they want the honest opinion? And they said yes. It might hurt and it might affect her and it might not be what she is fishing for, but it's exactly what was asked. You know, I see people in the comments saying that OP is using a radical honesty ideology to cover up just being blatantly rude, but I don't think that's the way OP went about this at all. If somebody was actually doing that, you know those kinds of people that would storm in and be like, a little bit, yeah. And then people blow up because it's out of the blue and rude, and then you get the casual response of, well what, I'm being honest. OP tried their best to address the exact question in as respectful of a way as they could. OP shouldn't have to lie or try to create some diversion to the question 
because somebody asked them a loaded question. Am I the jerk for telling my pregnant wife to stop acting like a child? I, 35-year-old male, and my wife, 33-year-old female, are currently expecting our first child in December. I live in chronic pain right now due to a slew of health issues. I also work a job where I'm on my feet constantly. I can't get a new job right now due to personal reasons, but I plan to as soon as possible. My wife quit her job right after we found out we were expecting. We always plan this. The problem is, she's gotten really lazy. I understand pregnancy's hard, but it's gotten to the point that she won't even make food or clean the house sometimes. She's been whining and complaining constantly since the moment she took the test. She sounds like a child. I'm hungry, I'm sore, my head hurts, I'm sick, I can't poo, etc. I understood that these things are normal during pregnancy, so as much as it annoyed me, I bit my tongue. The second I'd get home every night, she'd want me to do something for her. She expected me to cook and clean as soon as I got home every night. The straw that broke the camel's back happened a couple days ago. I had just gotten home from a 10-hour shift and was having a flare-up. I just wanted to have a bath and relax because I was in so much pain. I told her I'd had a terrible day and to just door dash something. I rarely let her do this because those fees are freaking ridiculous so I thought it would be a treat. But she said that she can eat only home cooked meals and that everything else makes her sick. This is where I may be the jerk. I yelled at her and told her I've had the worst day and she needs to stop complaining and be an adult for once. She started crying. I immediately apologized over and over again, but she left anyway. A couple hours later, my mother-in-law called me and called me a misogynistic runt and a slew of other names. I hung up because I don't need that. Now the beans are spilled and all the women in our family are mad at me, and my wife still won't freaking speak to me. So, am I the jerk? Would you guys agree with me when I say that outright OP definitely a jerk move for blowing up like that? But like at the same time understanding that people are under pressure or their stress and OP said that they immediately started apologizing and that this situation goes from OP being the jerk to everybody being the jerk the moment the mother-in-law called and started going right for OP's head. With both sides being described here as maybe not having the best communication or teamwork skills. OP having chronic pain, the wife obviously being pregnant, would you guys agree when I say that all around every side is a jerk and that there's some serious communication that needs to be done here? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from AITA Angie. Am I the jerk for leaving my sister and her husband on the side of the road? I came from a very sex positive household. My parents taught my sister and I about sex, sexuality and their non vanilla lifestyle from a young age. They were very affectionate and touchy with each other in public and didn't and still don't seem to care about others' opinions. They lived a very non-conventional lifestyle and weren't afraid to flaunt it. On one hand, my parents never treated sex as a shameful subject. Therefore, I received a very comprehensive, inclusive form of sex education. On the other hand, I think I was introduced to many topics at a very young age. In many ways, my sister Angie turned out like my parents. She proclaims that she's sex positive and has no qualms with openly discussing sex in great detail at every opportunity. She believes that if a person's uncomfortable, they must be a conservative virgin or prude who clearly hates all form of self-expression. Her words. My wife Zara isn't a huge fan of PDA. Other than hand-holding or occasional kisses on the cheek, She isn't comfortable with doing much in public. We're also not the type of people to discuss our sex life with people, much less family. Angie doesn't like Zara. She believes that Zara is too conservative or prudish for our family. She often makes fun of Zara for looking embarrassed when she's discussing in excruciating detail about sex. Zara barely says anything, but Angie still manages to make fun of her. I don't speak to Angie much. Recently, Zara's brother passed away. Angie's husband Bill knew his partner and wanted to pass on his condolences. Zara, Angie, Bill, and I all wanted to attend his wake. Instead of taking separate cars, Angie suggested that we all go together. To be honest, I was not a huge fan of this idea. It was a two-hour drive from where we lived to our destination. Also, we were planning on leaving very early so that we could help set up, and we were planning to leave late. We still managed to do it. At first, everything was alright. Understandably, no one was speaking in the car and it was very quiet in the car. 
Most people were keeping to themselves or sleeping. Midway through the drive, Angie and Bill start making out in the back seat of our car. When I say making out, I mean full on making out. They were pushing up against the car door and making all sorts of noises. Zara and I were extremely uncomfortable. I pulled over and started yelling at Angie. I told them that I was disgusted by their behavior and that they're acting like horny little teenagers. Angie said that they were grieving. I yelled at them to get out of my car. At first they were protesting, but I was so angry and so tired of them already, I told them to find their way home by themselves. My parents think that I went too far with them and that Zara needs to loosen up in order to be part of this family. Obviously Angie and Bill are still extremely pissed. I think OP and their wife are both not the jerk here. I have no qualms with being sex positive, but everybody has their own personal comfort and limits. And I think anybody needs to understand that openly making out in the back of somebody else's car is a bit past that cutoff of doing without knowing whether or not it's acceptable or okay. I mean, if you ask me what sex positive means, it means understanding that it's not a shameful thing and understanding protection, consent. It's not this crutch that you can use, therefore you can get away with doing whatever you want in public shamelessly. Imagine being told essentially, unless you can deal with watching us stick our tongues inside each other's mouths, you're just too prudish for this family. I'd be like, you know what, maybe I'll just keep my distance then. Our next story is from Marfid Meal Help. Am I the jerk for wanting my son to be treated equally and able to enjoy family meals with cousins? My son is 9 and has avoidance slash restrictive food intake disorder. We're working with many therapists in all areas, but it's slow developing. He has very few safe foods and they're all super processed junk food. He used to have more foods, but when it changes or tastes different, he'll no longer eat it. He ate one sour grape seven years ago and still cries at the thought of eating another. It's bad. Anywho, we used to have family meals with my wife's extended family relatively often. A few times a month, maybe. We stopped when we realized eating in groups was making our son worse. Recently, we've had a huge milestone, meaning he can eat in public again. He's super excited about it, and we've eaten out a few times since. McDonald's mostly, but still in public. Anywho, my wife called her sister and asked if we could join their family meals again, maybe just once a month to build his confidence. She said yes initially, and my wife told her we'd bring his food up so he could eat comfortably. My sister-in-law then backtracked, saying that wasn't going to be feasible. She claimed it was too unfair on the other kids to have to eat proper meals while he gets to snack on junk food, which we obviously understand, but the youngest of the children is eight, and I feel like at that age, it's easy to explain that he has additional needs. Which I mentioned to her, my wife got upset and left me to deal with the conversation. I told my sister-in-law straight that this wasn't him being treated better. It was a serious medical condition and it wouldn't be that hard to explain to the rest of the children that he has a different diet to them. She got increasingly upset, claiming that her children shouldn't have to be forced to watch him eat nicer food. I then told her my son shouldn't be forced to miss out on family meals, at which point she hung up. She later messaged my wife to inform her I was rude and wouldn't take no for an answer. My wife said I should have just accepted it when she hinted at not wanting him there, but I disagreed. I think he's just as deserving as everyone else. She got annoyed with me, then, and now I'm just wondering if what I said was really that bad. Am I the jerk? I think everything that's gone on here from OP side of things definitely makes them not the jerk. If anything, I feel like it would be better for those other kids to be exposed to people like OP's son who have conditions that maybe they don't immediately understand, but it's like a learning opportunity for them to become empathetic and understand that other people are afflicted with different things. I don't know, maybe I'm overly optimistic as to how an 8 year old would handle these things. I mean at the end of the day, one kid is getting a bunch of McDonald's and the other is getting some not as enjoyable meal. I will say though that I think OP is the jerk if they continue to try to force the issue, if straight up the sister-in-law just doesn't want to do it. This next story is from new GF throwaway 11 Am I the jerk for asking my new boyfriend to spend less time with his late wife's family? I, 30-year-old female, have been dating my new boyfriend, 33-year-old male, we'll call him Bill, for about 5 months. Bill lost his wife Meg in a car accident last year. They were together for 10 years, married for 5, and had a son together. Bill's son is now 3. 
I feel like Bill and I are really clicking, and I like where our relationship is heading. He's met my family and gets along with them. My one problem is Bill still spends a lot of time with Meg's family. He plays softball with Meg's uncle and has gone to Meg's grandmother's house for dinner with his son a bunch of times. He brings his son to see Meg's mother pretty much every week. Bill has never said no to coming with me to my family's house, and he's asked me to go with him to Meg's family's house. I haven't gone with him to Meg's family. It feels weird. Well, the other night I asked him if he could spend less time with Meg's family. He got very quiet and asked why. I said it made me feel like we couldn't move forward if he was still always seeing Meg's family. He said I was ridiculous and that he was going to separate his son from his grandparents and that he views Meg's uncle as one of his best friends. We got into a big fight, but I still feel he spends too much time with them. Some of my friends agreed that I'm ridiculous. Am I the jerk? I think OP is the jerk here because I don't really understand what the issue here is. Are they insecure that the old family is going to steal Bill? Is OP afraid that Bill's going to cheat on them with Meg's family? I mean, these are people that Bill has associated with and gotten to know for 10 years. I mean, they probably considered them as family for a decade. And now because they're in a new relationship, you expect them to drop what they consider to be family? I think it's pretty freaking ridiculous and I think OP's definitely the jerk. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. That said, our next story is from ConfidentBug459. Am I the jerk? I yelled at a student's dad and told him to freak off. I, female 18, look exactly like my sister, female 22. Whenever we meet new people, they always assume we're identical twins. We most definitely are not. My sister just finished her degree and is now a teacher. I'm working at a restaurant that has skimpy uniforms. I'm having a quick vape on a break and some guy walks by with his kid. I see his kid grab his dad and say something. The dad walks back to me and says that I should be ashamed of myself for doing this kind of work when I work with kids. I tell him he's mistaken and he's thinking of my sister. He says he's met me before and he knows that I don't have a twin. No crap, Sherlock. I tell him that it's not really his business, but we're sisters, not twins. He says he's going to go into my school and report me for this. I've had enough. My break was over, so I raised my voice, told him to go ahead, and told him to get freaked. He looked all shocked. I told my coworkers and they all think it's funny. I told my mom and she says I should have handled it better because it could affect my sister's job. My dad says I was polite twice and that's enough. My sister's pissed at me and isn't looking forward to going to work after Thanksgiving. Question: Why was this guy in a place that's considered inappropriate for kids with their kid? Second of all, this has been kind of a trend I've seen recently where people expect people who work with kids, whether it's a preschool, daycare type thing, or a straight up teacher to, when they're off the clock, always still be in teacher mode. Always be dressed up in some colorful dress with ABC123 on the skirt, nicely done hair, teachers being patron saints outside of the classroom. I think even if this was the teacher that works with kids and off the clock they're doing a second job at Hooters or something, that there's nothing wrong with that at all because they're trying to survive. Shoot, even if they were just doing it for fun, there's nothing wrong with it. What matters is, are they doing good and are they respectful and appropriate in the classroom? Our next story is from an anonymous poster. Am I the jerk for coming home early from meeting boyfriend's parents? My boyfriend and I went to see his parents for the first time this weekend. It's Canadian Thanksgiving. We were supposed to stay Saturday, Sunday, and fly back afternoon Monday. I'm riding this Sunday night, already back in my own bed. My boyfriend's parents greeted us at the airport and brought us home. They then proceeded to ask me if I had drugs in my bag, and I was pretty shocked because who asks that? I said only Tylenol, and they nodded and showed us to our rooms, which meant I got the guest room and my boyfriend was to sleep in his old room. His parents were serving dinner, and during dinner, I was asked to pay for my portion of the Thanksgiving dinner, $30. I was pretty shocked and angry because who does that? I've never been asked to pay for someone's ingredient fees when I guessed at their place. I didn't answer, and then confronted my boyfriend in his room and asked why I was asked to pay. He said it's something they ask of their friends as well. When they have a barbecue, they ask people to pay their portion. Honestly, I'm shocked they have friends. 
I reminded him that he's eaten in my place dozens of times and was never asked to pay. He claimed if they asked he would have, but they never did. Because it's rude to do that to a guest. But his mom came and got me and escorted me to my room. I was fuming and looking for tickets home and texted my boyfriend to say I was going home tomorrow. He called me and begged me to stay, saying his family already don't like me for not agreeing to pay for dinner and I'm just making it worse. I ignored him and rebooked an early flight, which was very expensive, and got a cab to the airport in the morning. I told my friends this, who had confirmed they've never been asked to pay for a meal while they were a guest. And if they were struggling, why even invite me over? Is this normal practice? Their house was pretty big, I don't think it was a money thing for them. I'm sorry, but I don't think I'd want to hang around very much around a family that is that penny pinching. If you are an invited guest, there is no way that you're supposed to pay unless you are told up front before you come over. If they're having a barbecue grill and they have like a bunch of food that they got, maybe a $5 fee, sure, tell me up front. I don't mind pitching in for that. You know, you're saying, oh, we're going to have a big Thanksgiving dinner. You want to help pitch in and pay for the stuff? Sure, then that's a little bit more acceptable. You can't drop a $30 fee on their head when they're there, though. That's so tacky. Our next story is from No Conference 1519. Am I the jerk for refusing to leave the house during my wife's book club? My wife has a weekly book club with her friends, and I'm really happy that she takes the time to enjoy our hobbies and connect with friends. The issue is she volunteered to host the club in our home, and I'm not allowed to be there while they're meeting. While I don't mind busying myself for an hour once in a while, they meet weekly for three to four hours at a time. She says there's a no men rule because the women share private things with each other which I understand and respect, but I also don't think it's fair for them to expect me to get kicked out of my own home for most of my weekend, especially since I work six days a week. We both work, but I work more days, and I only have that one Saturday off. I also prefer to spend the extra time playing video games, so it's not like I can just take my computer to Starbucks with me. I've offered to put on headphones and stay in the bedroom, but she still says the women will still feel my presence. I've asked if the women could take turns hosting, but she says all of the women have reasons why they can't host. Including, which I thought was kind of irritating, some of their husbands not wanting to leave the home for so many hours. I've also asked if they could meet at a coffee shop, and even offered to help pay for them to rent a meeting room somewhere, but she said they felt more comfortable in a home. This has been going on for two months now. And last week I told my wife I couldn't keep this up anymore and she had to find a solution herself because I've given her so many options already and gave her the heads up that I wasn't leaving this weekend. I think she thought I was bluffing, but come Saturday I stayed home. Out of respect I stayed in the bedroom when everyone came over, but they knew I was there and I could tell the meeting got cut short because of that. My wife and I had a huge row afterwards and here we are now. She's not talking to me and I'm pretty pissed, but I'm not sure who's really in the wrong here. I don't think OP's the jerk here. OP's try to give every concession that I think is more than reasonable, which is I will be completely out of your way, headphoned up, you won't hear me, you won't see me, it's like I won't even be there, and that's not good enough. I mean, it gets to the point where you start wondering just what is going on here, because it just seems a little too restrictive. Like, what are you doing that I cannot be around at all for? Like, no chance. It's probably more of a gossip meeting than it is a book club. Our next story is from Throa334356. Am I the jerk for not wanting my husband to walk his sister down the aisle? My husband Mike, 37, is the eldest in his family. He's pretty close with his sister Beth, 28, and they spend almost all week together. Beth had issues with her father growing up. She went no contact with him after he took her first car and damaged it. She only remained in contact with Mike since everybody else judged her for going no contact. She's getting married to her fiancé of three years. From what I understand, she and her dad are slowly getting reconciled, but she made it clear that she wants him to take no part in the wedding. She asked Mike if he could walk her down the aisle and he agreed. I have to say that I was taken aback and it felt a bit odd for me because her dad is alive. They're on speaking terms again. He's gonna be there at the wedding. So the logical thing to do is have him walk her down the aisle. The role isn't for her older brother, but her father. Not to mention how father-in-law will feel about it. 
I brought this up with Beth, and she had an attitude and implied that I was just saying this and objecting because of how I feel about the situation, not how our traditions should be practiced. We got into an argument, and I went home. Mike thinks I'm being unreasonable and possibly causing him to miss something so sentimental and that if anything he feels honored to be asked to do this for her and said that I should stop worrying about what others might say. Now we're having this conflict, three of us, and cannot seem to reach a solution. I mean, I don't know about their traditions, their beliefs, but personally I feel like it comes down to what the bride and the groom want. If the bride wants a specific person to walk them down the aisle, whether that's their dad, their brother, their grandfather, their mom, a sister, a friend, I don't think it matters. What matters is what the bride wants. At the end of the day, in my eyes, the only goal is getting married and celebrating it how you want to. So I think OP is the jerk. This next story is from my throwaway account. Am I the jerk for not giving my stepsister my college fund, although I won't need it? I, 18 year old female, have a stepsister Lily, female 19. We both finished high school, different school system here, this summer. We both want to attend university the next year and are currently doing other stuff and still living at home. Lily is my stepdad's, male 58, daughter. They moved in with mom, female 52, and me two years ago. My ex-boyfriend Daniel, 19 of 3 years and I, planned on applying to the same, pretty prestigious and expensive uni and want to study the same subject, so we still would have been able to be close to each other and continue our relationship. Daniel, Lily and I all attended the same school and at our prom night I caught them making out in the back. I was of course devastated. Daniel tried to apologize to me and to work things out, but I don't think he can make up for this betrayal and I ended things. Since then, him and Lily are together, I sometimes hear them screwing at our place. None of my business anymore, we luckily don't share a room. Daniel, however, still has plans to apply to Uni A, while I don't because of him being there. I found another great uni that'll accept me, I know because it only depends on the GPA, and isn't as expensive, therefore I'll only need a small part of my college fund. My mom set this fund up with my dad, and because they both earn pretty good money, it has enough money for multiple years at whatever uni I'd like. Meanwhile, Lily has almost no money saved up for college because her parents didn't set up a fund in time. Now the issue, Lily now wants to attend uni A to keep the relationship with Daniel, but doesn't have enough money without taking a large loan. Therefore, she asked me for almost my whole fund since I won't need it anymore. I don't want to, because I have other purposes for my money. But she and my stepdad are calling me a selfish brat that isn't capable of sharing. My mom says it's my money and I get to decide what to do with it. Daniel recently also started texting me and pressuring me into giving Lily my money so they can stay together. Am I the jerk for not giving Lily the money, even though I don't necessarily need it, but she does? So, I think OP is clearly not the jerk here, and it has nothing to do with being cheated on, them being in a relationship, whether or not OP likes Lily or not. The bottom line is it is OP's money, and they don't have any reason to give it away to somebody else unless they specifically want to. Unless OP's feeling mighty generous and wants to spend thousands of dollars to cover Lily's education, they don't owe them anything at all. Our next story is from throwaway82937u. Am I the jerk for buying more souvenirs for one of my grandsons? I have two sons, Samuel and Alex. Samuel has a son, Adrian, 9, and Alex has a son, Neil, 11. Samuel earns a lot more than Alex, and this summer he decided to send me on vacation as a gift for my birthday. While I was there, I bought a souvenir for Neil, but since Samuel was the one who sent me to this vacation, I decided to buy several more souvenirs for Adrian. After I got back, I gave their souvenirs to my grandsons, and I could tell that Neil looked upset. Later, I heard Neil and Alex talking, and Alex explained to him that I gave Adrian more gifts, because his dad gave me the money for this vacation. Neil didn't say anything to me, but he looked a little sad the entire time. Later that night, Alex told me that I'm a jerk for not treating them equally. I think OP is the jerk here because they're not buying souvenirs for their son who paid for the vacation. They're buying souvenirs for their grandkids who have no actual attachment here. They're 11 and 9 years old. They themselves didn't pay for this trip. Why should they be treated differently? 
and take a step back and look at the optics. You're gonna treat one grandson better because the father's more well off and buys you more stuff? Sorry, Neil, you're only gonna get one gift for Christmas. Your father just couldn't afford to get me nice enough stuff this year. Our next story is from Physical Emu1347. Am I the jerk for telling my nephew that he was fat? I, 30-year-old female, was having dinner at my sister's, 40-year-old female's house. During dinner, I asked my nephew, 14-year-old male, how he was liking high school and if he made any new friends. He shrugged and didn't seem enthusiastic about giving me an answer. My sister started pressuring him to answer. She then started teasing him about having a crush on someone and asking what their name was. My nephew got very upset and snapped at my sister, saying that he didn't want to answer because he didn't have any friends, and even if he did have a crush on someone, no one would want him because he was fat. My nephew is 256 pounds. He likes to play video games and spends most of his free time laying on the couch, eating chips and gaming. Now, my entire family is very large, my brother-in-law is 450, sister is 270, they never pay attention to what they eat and eat when they want. I used to be 300 pounds, but started dieting and exercising and I'm now 225. I understand the struggle with binge eating and how difficult it is to lose weight. So after hearing the anger and disgust in his voice, I told him that he was right. He was fat. I told him he had two options. He could either start watching what he ate and start an exercise routine to lose weight, or he could keep overeating and stay fat. If he wanted help in losing weight, I could offer him advice, but if he decided he didn't want to lose weight, then he needed to learn how to own being fat. Because unless he made some drastic changes, he'll just keep getting bigger. So if he didn't want to make those changes, then he needs to start learning how to accept being fat and how some people won't like him because of his weight. The choice was his to make. My nephew got up and stormed off when I finished talking. Later that day, my sister called me and told me that my nephew had been crying because of the stuff I had said, and wanted me to apologize for being mean to her son. I didn't think I said anything cruel or unreasonable, but I figured I'd check. Am I the jerk? So I completely understand what OP was trying to do here, but I don't think it was the right time to do so. I think the kid was kind of opening up a little bit and saying basically how it feels and how they're being treated in regards to their weight. So OP immediately jumping in there and saying, well, you're fat. Here's what you can do about it. If you want to change it, you can change it. If not, you're going to just keep getting bigger. Let me know. It just wasn't the right time. OP should have revisited it after the fact, reached out to them privately and discussed it, not in a public forum. If after the fact, when the kid was by themselves, if OP reached out and said, hey, I know exactly what you're going through. It all starts with wanting to improve, wanting to change, and then laying out the whole spiel. That would have been infinitely better. But in this situation, OP was the jerk. Am I the jerk for driving my sister to her gender reveal appointment despite her husband's disapproval? I'm male, 33. My parents are deceased. I have a younger sister, female, 25, who's married and expecting. I'm also married, but I don't have kids due to health issues on both sides. I'd visit and check on my sister from time to time. I'm not on great terms with her husband, male 31, but we're civil to each other. She started calling asking for my help more often since she got pregnant. I have no issue with this, but brother-in-law thinks I'm being too involved in my sister and the baby's life. Last week, I got a call from my sister asking if I could take her to the doctor's office. It was a gender reveal appointment. I asked why her husband didn't take her, and she explained that he was supposed to drive her, but he had to attend his mom's birthday, and asked her to reschedule, but she refused. I took her to the appointment, but brother-in-law called and was furious, saying I shouldn't have gotten involved, because now I'd caused him a precious moment in finding out if he was going to have a girl or a boy. Basically saying that I took this experience away from him and calling me weird for being too involved in my sister's marriage and sticking my nose in it to the point where I was making the doctor think I was her husband. I told him the reason the doctor thought I was her husband was because of his absence and lack of commitment as a father. He blew up at me and I hung up on him. My wife said that she gets that I want to help my sister out but said that I might have gone too far and should have respected brother-in-law's boundaries. I think OP's not the jerk here, and I think OP was just being a good sibling. 
they're helping out whenever they can. The bottom line here is if there's anybody that the husband needs to take this up with, it's their wife, not OP. The wife was solely the one that was dead set on getting to that doctor's appointment and not canceling. It's not OP's fault that they were willing to drive their sister to a doctor's appointment. Am I the jerk for using a spray bottle to train my nephew? My nephew is a rainbow baby. My sister had a lot of trouble conceiving and he was kind of a miracle. She was 42 when she finally managed to give birth. She was on bed rest for the last three months of her pregnancy. My nephew's now six and while I love him, he is a monster. He throws tantrums when things don't go his way. He screams if he loses playing a game. He refuses to understand why you can't ride my seven-year-old St. Bernard. And he thinks any food is his. My husband's diabetic and he loves cookies. I found a bakery that makes amazing sugar-free cookies, but they're expensive. I budget for them because my husband deserves his treats when he gets home from work. My sister was visiting and my nephew was running around like a squirrel. He tripped and started crying, so my sister picked him up. He saw the cookie container on the counter and started asking for some. I said no, that they were special cookies for his uncle. I offered him a regular cookie or some fruit, but he got all upset that he was being denied. My sister asked if he could please have a cookie. I relented and gave him one. He took a bite and said it was yucky and threw it on the ground. I was a little upset. A little while later, he came back and asked for another cookie. I said no. My sister said to just give him one. I told her no, he wasted the last one. He started screaming that he wanted a cookie. I stood my ground. He eventually went away. Next time he came, he didn't ask. He just went for the container. I grabbed the spray bottle I used to keep the cat off the counter. I gave him a couple of squirts and said no. He got startled and ran away. My sister said her son isn't an animal to be reprimanded with water. The next time he came into the kitchen, I put my hand on the spray bottle. He didn't even look at the counter and he went away. My sister called my parents to tell on me for treating her kid like that. They're mad at me for not giving in to the poor baby. I think OP's not the jerk here because I feel like it's pretty obvious this kid was not respecting OP's house or their rules and their own sibling wasn't going to discipline their child. It might be stooping to the same level as how you'd treat a cat, but it's effective and it's not like a couple squirts of water in the kid's face is gonna harm them at all. What do you guys think? Are you the jerk for spraying a rowdy nephew that won't listen to you in the face with some water? I'd like to know what you guys think for sure in the comments down below. Our next story is from R Nevermore. Am I the jerk for calling the police on my fiance? Last night, my 35-year-old male, fiance, 38-year-old female, left in the evening to give a friend's son a ride back to his home. She implied she'd be home before 9. She left at around 7.45. 10.15 rolled around and she still wasn't home. I texted and she apologized to me, saying that her friend's son was actually in the next town over, maybe 30 minutes away, and she was coming home now. 11.45 rolled around and she still hadn't come home, so I called her to no answer. Texted her, no response. I was getting very upset. 12.30 rolled around and still no response and no answer to my phone calls. I was extremely angry. 1.30 rolled around and my anger had completely transformed into worry. Not answering my calls and texts not read. Around 1.45, I called the police. I've always heard that the first 24 hours of someone being missing is the most important, so I didn't want to delay. I asked them to let me know if there had been any traffic accidents involving her car, and the operator told me that they would put out the word and send some cops to check along the route she would travel. I called all the hospitals in the area to check if she had been checked in, and I waited outside watching the road for her car for three hours, partially because I didn't want the kids to hear me on the phone with hospitals and secondly because I was sick with worry. At 7am, she came home. She apologized for being out and said she had no excuse. She was driving home and felt tired like she was falling asleep at the wheel, so she pulled over to the side of the road to sleep. When she did that, she found out her brand new phone had stopped working. She says she napped anyway because it was the responsible thing to do, and then came home at 7am to bring the kids to school and get to work on time. I immediately called the police and told them that she had come home safely and gave them the case number and told them to stop searching which they did. My fiancé brought the kids to school and left for work. I set out to start cleaning. Cleaning de-stresses me sometimes, and I got a call from a policeman asking where she worked. 
I told him and asked why, and I was informed that it was their policy to check on the person's wellness after a missing person is found. I asked them not to go by her work, but to give her a call instead. He said he couldn't promise. My fiance is relatively new to her job. A police officer showed up and asked to speak with her. She's now enraged at me for calling the police and sending a cop to work and making her look bad. She's saying I overreacted and that she wasn't missing and that I was punishing her for doing the responsible thing and not driving while drowsy. She's saying that she's never going to leave the house again except for work, but she's afraid I'm going to call the cops on her again. So did I overreact? Should I have waited two days like she suggests? absolutely not the jerk and whether or not op has previously agreed never listen to that advice thank god i don't know from experience but i can tell after the fact if something did go bad you would never forgive yourself for not doing something sooner it would be so incredibly hard to move past and this is a completely legitimate reason to get worked up and worried and call the cops They went totally missing on their way home at night. That circumstance is probably up there on the common ways that people even disappear. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Happy Single Dwarf. Am I the jerk for telling my sister-in-law that I'll call the cops for child abandonment the moment she steps out of the house? Me, 25-year-old male. My brother Jack, 27-year-old male and his wife Jill, 25-year-old female. It all started when Jack and Jill got pregnant. Their lease almost ended and my parents invited them to stay at our house. The day they came, Jack asked me why I hadn't moved out of my room yet. I was confused, like, what the freak? And he told me that he and Jill will be at my room and I go to the guest room. I refused, but my parents got mad and we got into a fight. I lost and ended up in the much smaller guest room. Then Jill had a problem with my cooking. I eat scrambled eggs with mozzarella and avocado every day for breakfast, and she couldn't stand the smell. She asked me to stop. I refused. My parents got involved. I had to stop. There were problems with other food too, and I had to stop cooking them. I was told I must be more accommodating because she was pregnant. Like, that's my problem. Then Jill started to boss me around. We were alone for eight hours while my parents and Jack worked. She obviously thought I'd be her personal maid. I refused. She threw a temper tantrum, and like always, and I again had a big fight with Jack and my parents. I was told that she had a high-risk pregnancy and was on bed rest, and I am a jerk for not helping her. I told Jack that he knocked her up, it's his responsibility. I stood on my ground, and in the end, Jill's cousin came to help her sometimes. Then Jill gave birth to my nephew. I congratulated them when they came home, and that's it. I don't like babies, so I mostly keep to myself now, but that doesn't stop Jill to ask for favors. Please watch the baby while I take a quick shower. Please watch it while I make myself some food, etc. I always refuse, and we always have new fights over and over again. It all came to a head last Friday when she asked me to watch my nephew while she goes to the pharmacy for baby formula. I refused. She got mad and we had a fight. She grabbed her purse to go anyway, and I told her that the moment she walks out that door, I will call the police for child abandonment. I was serious and she knew it. She broke down and screamed what a horrible human being I am. Then she ran to her room. She had a complete mental breakdown. When Jack and my parents came home, we had the biggest fight yet. Jack accused me of hating Jill and my nephew upon other things. I told him I refused to bond because they'll weaponize him against me. My parents told me enough is enough, that they can't believe they raised such a selfish human being, and that either I help or I move out. I'm thinking of the second option. Am I the jerk? I work from home and pay 50% of all household expenses, including mortgage. Jack and Jill don't contribute anything for expenses. This overall just sounds like, from all angles, kind of awful. If OP really is paying for half of all of the house bills and necessities, including the mortgage, they're not responsible to play babysitter for somebody else that's staying there. Just because OP is related doesn't mean that they have to help out. If this was just a roommate who was renting that room and paying for half of everything, would they be expected to have to take care of the baby sometimes, watch the baby, watch what they cook? I don't think so, and therefore I think it's unfair to expect that from OP as well. 
And besides, OP was already forced to give up every other concession. They already got shoved in a small, tiny room. Our next story is from throwaway 679991 Am I the jerk for refusing to pay for fixing the babysitter's laptop? I, single mom of two, hired a babysitter after I started working a new job. I used to do work from home for two years. My kids are 8 and 6, the babysitter 17. She brings her laptop with her to study, which is perfectly okay with me as long as she keeps an eye on the kids. Yesterday I came home and the babysitter showed me her laptop that got broken by my youngest. I was shocked and asked how this happened and she said that she left the laptop in the living room and went to make the kids lunch but my youngest grabbed it and ran with it until he dropped it and broke the screen. I said that was horrible and apologized to her but stated it was her fault for leaving the laptop within reach of children. She said she thought my kids were old enough to know not to touch other stuff. I explained how they might have thought it belonged to us since it was in our house. She asked if I could pay for it to get fixed but I refused and insisted it was her problem, not mine. She ranted about having exams soon and not having enough money to get it fixed. We argued, and I had to tell her to go home after she persisted. Later on, I got a call from her dad, basically blaming the whole thing on me and demanding I pay to get the laptop fixed, but I still refused. Now, she's refusing to come again unless I pay her for the laptop repair, even though I paid her in advance to watch the kids. Now, I'm not a parent myself, so I don't necessarily know exactly what you can and can't expect from a 6-year-old and an 8-year-old. I would hope that you could entrust them to not just grab a laptop and go running around with it, let alone the fact touch somebody else's laptop that you have no knowledge of you ever owning. The bottom line here is the kid was the one that grabbed the laptop and went off running with it, and your kid is the one that broke it. I think it's only fair to pay for it to get fixed, as much as it sucks. Our next story is from AITA Throw Language. Am I the jerk for refusing to stop speaking Chinese around my stepfamily? I, 16 year old female, grew up speaking both English and Chinese, Mandarin but I'm just gonna say Chinese to keep it simple, at home. My dad is white but lived in China for a while so he understands pretty well. And my mom's learned English but is still most comfortable with her first language. I'm fluent in both, but I'm close to my mom's family and have a lot of friends from immigrant families, so I use them interchangeably. My parents got divorced a few years ago, which sucked. I mostly live with my mom, but spend weekends and some school breaks with my dad. Everything was okay until my dad started dating Jane. I don't have a lot in common with Jane and she's kind of pushy and invasive. Like, she has to always be involved in everything, whether it's anything to do with her or not. She has a son, 10 year old male, that's okay, but not happy about stuff either. It got worse when they got engaged and moved in last year. I thought at least I could just avoid them most of the time during the weekend, but Jane won't leave me alone. The big problem right now is that she doesn't like it when I speak Chinese at their house, because she can't understand it. She complains when I zoom my cousins or watch Chinese dramas on my phone. She says it's because she can't tell if I'm being appropriate but I tell her my dad understands me and it's his business, not hers. She whined about it to my dad, who asked if I would just speak English when I'm at their place to keep the peace and I said that I would always talk English in conversations with her, but I'm not going to stop speaking and listening to Chinese when it doesn't involve her and I'd stop coming over if that wasn't okay. My dad said that was fine and he'd talk to her. It caused a fight between them and she started loudly speaking over me or my shows in English instead. So I've stopped talking to her at all. And I speak to my dad in Chinese and my stepbrother in English, which makes her big mad. She thinks I'm crap talking her, but I don't talk about her at all and my dad would tell me off if I was. It's stressing my dad out though, so maybe I'm being the jerk? Definitely not the jerk here, and I'm sorry but if this is stressing your dad out, that's your dad's problem with Jane, not OP's fault at all, not OP's problem. Jane is literally so insecure and so nosy that they would rather try to put their foot down and force you to speak English and watch only English stuff so they can snoop and know everything, rather than just try to be comfortable around OP. Honestly, I think it would be super cool and it would be an opportunity for her and her son to kind of pick up some basic Mandarin. Our next story is from Loquacious Box 8284 Am I the jerk for lying about a food allergy? I'm vegan, have been for over 5 years. I'm lucky to live in a major city with a plethora of entirely or partially vegan restaurants. 
but when I visit my family in rural Pennsylvania, my options become non-existent. Attitudes towards veganism here range from ignorance to outright hostility. I try to avoid eating out with my family when I'm home, at all costs, but sometimes it simply isn't avoidable. For example, my sister's wedding rehearsal dinner. My sister had her dinner at the foremost fine dining establishment in this town. It's a big old tavern that bills itself as a French-influenced steakhouse. Menu fare is every imaginable cut of steak drowned in butter, with some chicken and fish drowned in butter, plus sides of veggies and mashed potatoes that are, yes, smothered in butter. The one or two vegetarian dishes are buttered and drowned in creamy sauce. Given that my little brother used to wait tables here, I know that they frown upon substitutions and don't use much veggie oil for the sake of quality. I've had two negative experiences here too. I tried to explain my vegan diet my first time here, in depth, yet my sad little plate of steamed broccoli was drizzled with butter, and my iceberg lettuce salad came with ranch. The second time, a chef came out personally and promised me that his tomato pasta dish was vegan, only for me to find that they'd swirled parmesan cheese into the red sauce to disguise that they'd accidentally sprinkled it on top. That incident broke my trust completely. For my sister's dinner, I called ahead and told the chef that I have life-threatening food allergies to meat proteins, dairy including butter, and egg. Finally, they took me seriously. I was served a dish of plain pasta with salt and pepper with fruit, which sucked, but I appreciated the consideration. For those allergies though, they had to scrub down the entire kitchen, clean the fryers, check the ingredient lists of their products, etc. That prep apparently cost them an extra two hours. And I didn't realize this. They charged my parents, who were paying for the rehearsal, an extra several hundred for their time. My sister and parents are livid. I already sent my mom the several hundred needed to cover the extra cost, but they're upset at me for lying and humiliating the chef and restaurant whom they have close ties to. My sister's wedding is this weekend, and something tells me that it's going to be tense. Personally, I think that if this restaurant is going to continue with their ignorance and inconsideration, they got what they deserve. Am I the jerk for ensuring my needs are met? I think OP is the jerk here. I think whether or not it's a place that OP personally picked out, or a place that OP just continuously gets invited to, at the end of the day, it's a steakhouse. OP is fighting so hard to show up this for not catering super well to vegan options. It's just not really what they do. So for OP to go and lie about a life-threatening food allergy that is very serious for a lot of people, make the workers' jobs there 10 times harder, and then after the fact say they got what they deserved. Congratulations, you made a steakhouse bend over backwards to give you a vegan option. The only part where I don't think OP is the jerk is when they asked for something and they got something that they were lied to about. That, if you did have a food allergy to something like that, could have been lawsuit worthy. If there was anybody to truly complain about, it would be complaining to the people that keep bringing you to this place and telling those people how they just cannot reasonably accommodate you. Our next story is from Date Plates. Am I the jerk for asking for matching plates for my girlfriend? I've been dating Mia and she's my world. Mia has OCD and likes to eat off matching plates and cutlery. She finds patterns too distracting and it upsets her. My sister hosts Thanksgiving and has a bunch of different theme plates, none that match well. I told her I want to bring Mia, but I was wondering if she could use different plates or even paper plates of one color. My sister's personality trait is to be that quirky, vintage, thrift girl and her husband is the kind of hipster douche. I told them on how to make my girlfriend feel welcome in the family, and that having paper plates isn't that big of a deal or cheap white plates. The argument was heated and it got to Christmas, and my mom who hosts Christmas said she's not giving up her Christmas plates either. It came down to be that I know my girlfriend's anxieties and OCD would be triggered in this noisy chaos that our holidays are. I told my mom and sister that I would spend Thanksgiving and Christmas with my girlfriend, and both said that's the best. I was upset by their response to not making her feel welcome. I didn't think asking for paper plates was that big of a deal, and I know many people that do that on the holidays. While maybe this isn't necessarily the hardest thing to accommodate for, if it's something they just don't want to, I just I don't think they can be jerks for not wanting to get special cutlery or plates because of the issue. 
Honestly, I really appreciate OP doing their best to look out for their girlfriend, but I feel like this issue is one that needs to be worked on and improved if they want to be a part of a greater family event like this because it's just not always going to be possible to cater to a situation like this where you have 20 matching dinner plate sets or you use nothing but paper plates. Honestly, I also kind of don't blame them because I've had some family that have special like Christmas cutlery and stuff. I don't know, maybe I got some old mom or grandma energy in me, but I kind of like the vibe of pulling out special plates and cutlery for a certain season, really submitting to being festive. Our next story is from throwaway69509765. Am I the jerk for giving my brother and his wife two days to return my piano? I, female 32, developed an interest for piano after meeting my late husband, who was a piano teacher for seven years. He taught me to play it and he helped me buy one, used one but still a bit expensive, two years ago. I play it every day. After his passing six months ago, I just find comfort spending time playing. However, my brother and his wife, who came to stay with me for two months after losing their apartment, always complain about the piano noise, although I only play at daytime. Sister-in-law and I started arguing more frequently, and my brother told me to only play it when they're out, but I refused. Yesterday I was out with friends for the day, and then I came in the evening and found my piano was gone. Turns out my brother had moved it to a friend's garage, I don't know which friend, while I was gone. I blew up at him and yelled that he had no right to touch it or move it. His wife said they did this as a last ditch effort to get some peace and quiet in the house. My brother reassured me that he'll give it back once he finds his own place, and I get to live alone and play the piano all day long. He was sarcastic in his last line, and I couldn't take it. I told them to pack and leave my house because they were no longer welcome after this. He freaked out and tried begging me to take it easy and be more rational, but I threatened to call the police if they refused to leave. He took his family and left. The piano still isn't back, and they're saying they'd give it back if I agreed to let them move back in, basically wanting things to go back to how they were when they were complaining about the noise. They believe that what happened was a misunderstanding, and every one of us mishandled the situation, so they want to start new. I lost it and told them they have two days to return it, or I'll call the cops on them. Mom's pressuring me to take them back, saying it was my fault for not having any consideration for them as my guests to begin with, but I refused to take them back and put my foot down on the timeline I gave. Now I'm being called irrational and cruel to kick my brother out, watch him struggle, and refuse to let him move back in and choosing to escalate this to the authorities when I could just let them move back in and I get my piano back. I don't blame OP at all, I think OP is clearly not the jerk here, and it is such antagonizing BS for them to say, chill chill chill, I think every one of us mishandled the situation. No, they need to own it, apologize, give the piano back, and then they probably need to drop to their knees and start begging even harder for a chance to even move back in. For the mom to hit them up and say, oh it's your fault. For them to say, oh everyone handled this wrong. No no no. They stole from OP, they need to get it back right away and maybe still figure out a new place to live. Well that's just how I feel about it. I'm not gonna lie, with the way the mom hit OP up, I'd probably want to go call the brother and say, you know what, mom tried to blame it on me, I don't know if you were lobbying her to do that, but now I'm giving you a day and a half. And the next time somebody tries to blame my missing piano on me, that time will continue to drop. Our next story is from Unclean Food AIT. Am I the jerk for telling my sister that her food is disgustingly inedible? A few weeks ago, my apartment flooded. Unfortunately, this has left me without a place to stay for a few weeks, and many things I have to pay to replace and repair. It's been a crappy few weeks to say the least. My sister told me I could stay with her for a few weeks until everything gets sorted out. To be honest, I'm not the closest with my sister, but I didn't mind sharing a space with her. She was nice enough to give me a place to stay, for no charge, so I can't really complain. My sister, and I mean this literally, is a terrible cook. It's not only that her food lacks any seasoning, it's almost always inedible. She cooks with expired ingredients and doesn't believe in throwing anything away. It's unhealthy and disgusting. I'm honestly afraid of touching things in her fridge or eating anything in her fridge. This wouldn't be much of a problem if she let me cook my own food and buy my own ingredients, but she believes that it's rude for guests to cook their own food and hates me for touching her stove. 
Every time I suggest cooking my own food, she gets really angry and starts yelling at me for no reason. I was getting tired of eating instant ramen noodles for all meals, and ordering food is expensive. My girlfriend kindly brought me home cooked food after I told her about my situation. She made me kimbap, Korean rice rolls, some rice and kimchi, fermented cabbage. It was more than enough food, and I was so happy that I could finally eat some real food. I was eating rice and kimchi for lunch, and the second my sister entered, she told me it looked like I was eating dog food. She even complained that I was making her apartment smell like dog food. I thought this was ironic. She keeps rotten food for weeks, and I'm apparently the one who's stinking her house up. I was going to ignore her and wear my headphones, but she was mumbling stuff about how I was eating food and that I was ruining the sanctity of her home. I was tired of listening to her complain about my girlfriend's food. I told her verbatim that I wouldn't have to rely on my girlfriend if she didn't make food that a stray dog wouldn't touch and that she should stop being a selfish, inconsiderate witch and let people touch her stove. Her food is disgustingly inedible. She got incredibly angry and hasn't spoken to me since. My girlfriend told me I should have chosen my words more carefully. I agree with OP's girlfriend. I hesitantly say that both sides are jerks. What OP said was just too far over the line, and I think maybe OP was kind of putting up with it a little too easily. I mean, I know the sisters willingly giving up their space and it's really nice of them, but I think at some point OP needed to put their foot down and say, hey, I just am not vibing with this cooking, and then maybe just focus on trying to bring stuff in if they don't want you to touch their stove at all. Our next story is from Super Secret 235 Am I the jerk for wanting my neighbor to remove her ring doorbell? I've been living in my apartment complex for two years and it's been wonderful. Recently, a young woman moved in across from my apartment. We introduced briefly and apart from the noise made when she was having movers bring in her things, she's very quiet and polite. However, there's one thing that bothers me. She has a ring doorbell on her door. Recently I saw her leaving and asked her why she had it and that I was worried that she could see in my apartment. She said she had it for packages and due to no peepholes on the doors, just extra security. She showed me that yes, it can see my door a bit, but assured me she's not on her phone all day checking it. I expressed my uncomfortableness and asked her to remove it. She told me that she was sorry I was uncomfortable, but she wasn't spying on me and had a right to have one up. She wasn't breaking her lease, and she'd seen other people in the complex have one. I told her, I don't care about other people. I want it gone, or I'll be reporting her. She told me not to bother, and called our property manager regarding it, because I got a visit from her, asking to leave her and the doorbell situation alone. Am I really out of line for this? As somebody that endlessly values having security cameras, let alone a doorbell camera, OP is a major jerk. I'm sorry if they can see into your apartment when you open your front door, but if anybody's standing there, they can see into your apartment. Do you have like bags and bags of drugs sitting by the front door or something? And our final story of the day is from Local Lab 2499 Am I the jerk for yelling at my pregnant sister because she ate my dinner? I, female 18, live with my mom and stepdad, and my older sister Lily, female 24. Lily's around 6 months pregnant with her first baby and moved back in after her boyfriend dumped her. After a long day at uni lectures, I came home and made myself dinner. After putting it on a plate, I left in the kitchen whilst I went to the toilet and I got distracted because the family dog needed to be let outside to go pee. By the time I got back to the kitchen, Lily had eaten my dinner. I told Lily that that was my dinner and she just stared at me in silence. I went to go make some cup noodles and told Lily this was annoying. Lily said she was hungry and said she's eating for two and told me to shut my mouth. I started yelling at Lily and told her she should be apologizing after eating my dinner and that maybe she should learn how to cook for herself if she's so darn hungry. Lily started screaming at me like a demon to the point where I didn't understand what she was saying and grabbed my cup noodles and threw them out the window, leaving me dinnerless and cup noodleless. Lily stormed out and went into her room. I told my mom and stepdad what happened, as they were very confused by the commotion. My mom told me I escalated the situation by yelling at her and by my comments, and I should apologize to Lily, and I should apologize to Lily, and that she's probably just hormonal. I don't think Lily's owed an apology, I think she was just being a jerk. 
but what do you guys think? I think OP is definitely not the jerk. Whether you're pregnant or hormonal, I think you still have enough resolve in your mind to understand that somebody else's food sitting in the kitchen is not their food and that somebody else probably prepared it for a reason. Maybe when OP flared up they were a little extra, but I don't think it makes them the jerk. And I do think OP is owed an apology. You can't use pregnancy as a crutch for taking other people's things. Am I the jerk for opening my husband's safe with a crowbar to get money for an emergency? I, female 31, am a stay-at-home mom with two kids. My husband dedicates most of his salary towards the kids and household, but has a safe that he puts money in on a monthly basis. I didn't make a fuss over it because he said that it saved money for an emergency. I asked for the password countless times, but he refused to give it to me and said that in case of an emergency, all I needed to do was inform him. He went on a two-day business trip. Our son got sick and I had to take him to the hospital. The problem is, he needed medication, but I didn't have any money except what was in the safe. I called my husband, but he didn't respond. I texted him explaining the situation, but he refused to cut his trip short and come home. I asked how Jay was supposed to get money for medication. He suggested that I either A, wait for him till he gets home, or B, borrow the money from the neighbors. I just had it. I hung up and went to the garage to grab a crowbar, then took it to the safe and opened it. I took the money I needed, which was about $60, and went to the pharmacy store to get the medication. My husband came home a bit earlier and when he saw what I'd done to the safe, he flipped out and started freaking out at me. I said I had no choice and all of his suggestions were unreasonable and illogical for me to even consider. He yelled saying I breached his trust and his boundaries and should never have touched his safe much less use the crowbar on it. We had a big argument and he kept saying I had no respect for him, his income, and instructions. Then he completely refused to speak to me and is threatening to move the safe since he no longer trusts it around me. Was I in the wrong for the steps I took? Should I have tried another alternative? I just can't blame OP in this situation. Some might try to make some kind of argument where like if you keep your finances separate, it's their money, blah blah blah. But this just seems like some weird insecurity, financial abuse thing where they're like, it's okay, I'll stash all this money away, it'll just be in the safe, if we need it for an emergency, it's there. Well, if he's not around and there's an emergency, you still can't access it. If in that moment you can't get access to it, when would you ever? I just can't blame OP. Is there any way that OP might be the jerk? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from OKMathematician887. Am I the jerk for labeling my food as having hot sauce to deter food thieves at work? Simple as that. My lunches were being taken while I was working, so I photocopied the label for one of my husband's hot sauce bottles and put it on my food, with a label that said it was one of the hottest sauces in the world. I got called into HR for contaminating the fridge. I asked how I did this with a sealed Tupperware container. They said one of my coworkers grabbed it by accident and was about to eat it when they noticed the label. I asked them to produce my container and my coworker's container so we could determine how this mix up could possibly have happened. Now, I don't want to hurt anyone, and my husband's tolerance for hot stuff is beyond insane, so I did not actually put hot sauce on my food. The HR lady asked me to wait a minute. She came back and said there had been a mistake and that the person who took my food had not brought in a container that day. So I asked if I could file the complaint for someone taking my food. She looked pissed, but she had hauled me in and I wasn't going to let it go. I received a copy of my complaint, but now my boss has asked me to drop it. I don't know who was stealing my food, but it must be someone they don't want to get rid of. My husband says I should just let it go, but he hasn't had multiple lunches go missing. Am I the jerk? Absolutely not the jerk. I can already imagine, like, imagine you have something nice, whether it's leftovers, something you prepared for yourself. Even if it's something cheap and easy, it's something that you like. You go to get it for lunch, and some jerk took it, and you have nothing for the rest of your multi-hour shift. That sucks, and putting a hot sauce label is honestly like the lower end of what you could have done. Also, considering the reaction, I bet a lot of people, me included, are willing to bet it might be the boss. Our next story is from Sarah Nee. Am I the jerk for putting my family in a difficult situation because I can't tolerate an extra person in the bus? I, 19-year-old female, was going to travel to a different state for a cousin's wedding with my family. Initially, they decided to go through train, since none of us wants to drive for 7 hours and attend a wedding tired. 
but I have severe motion sickness and I refused to travel by train. We're going with our uncle's family to make it a small family vacation as well, so my dad and him agreed on renting a bus so I would be more comfortable. I had some issues with this too because I don't like to travel with a lot of people, especially when all of them are so fond of talking. The noise is not worth it at all, but I still agreed because of my family's happiness. Now, a day before, I'm informed that we have to take a teenage relative with us because her parents don't want her to travel alone, and she's also invited at the wedding. My parents have no problem with it because they believe we can easily make some room for her in the bus. However, I honestly think one more member will make the environment more suffocated than it already is going to be. I told my parents I won't be traveling with them as she accompanies, and they said they can't back out now after they've told her parents they'll take her with us. I've decided to skip the whole wedding and the vacation and stay home. This has put my family in a stressful situation because they think their vacation would be incomplete without me and they don't want to leave me behind. My mom got overly emotional and said she won't be going either. Dad asked if he should book a bigger bus and I declined because it's not about the bus. I really didn't mean to see them unhappy or stressed when they should be excited for the vacations and I can't help but feel guilty. I feel like I've ruined their trip. So unless this teenage relative has some serious background with OP that we just don't know, maybe because OP's not mentioning it, I think OP is the jerk. Especially when the dad's going out of the way to offer to book an even bigger bus to try to make things more accommodating. I mean, I understand that it's not OP's fault that they have issues traveling by train, but that means everybody else is compromising by taking the bus, and I think that also means that OP should be a little compromising and work with them, so everybody can get to the wedding and have a good time. Our next story is from the Smiths Row. Am I the jerk for refusing to let my husband drive my son to school with his step-siblings anymore? Context, my ex-husband and I have custody of our 11-year-old son. He's diabetic and since his diagnosis is relatively new, we're still working on managing things for him so he could continue to live a normal life just like other kids. His stepdad is responsible for dropping him off and picking him up from school since his step-siblings attend the same school. The issue began when my son started asking me or his bio dad to take him to school instead of his stepdad. He said the reason for that is because his step-siblings open his lunchbox and take all the additional snacks that he needs in case he has a hypoglycemic episode. That's what we call low blood sugar. His step-siblings would take his lunchbox from him and take the snacks and only leave him with a sandwich and water. His stepdad thinks there's nothing wrong with sharing, although I explained to him about a million times now how important his snacks are. He promised that he won't let his kids touch my son's lunchbox from now on, and I believed him. Days ago, my son came home and told me his step-siblings took his snacks from his lunchbox again. I was enraged. I asked if his stepdad saw them. He said yes, and he scolded them when he refused to let them have the snacks. I lost it. I blew up at my husband and told him that my son won't be riding in his car again with his step-siblings after what they'd done and after he allowed it. I told him that my son's father will be driving him to and from school from now on. He lashed out at me saying I was driving a wedge between the kids and teaching my son to grow up being selfish and self-centered and antisocial and also making my son distant from him and getting him to favor his bio dad. I refused to discuss it. Now he's acting all hurt and disrespected, saying it wasn't worth ruining the kid's relationship over some snacks. So question here, is he dumb? Is the stepdad like extremely low IQ? Does he have like a really hard time understanding basic concepts? I'm asking because this guy can't understand the importance of these snacks. These aren't some extra fruit roll-ups. These aren't some gushers that he gets special because his mom loves him more than the step-sibling's dad loves them. They might have a legitimate life-threatening emergency. This dude doesn't understand that? And then he goes and argues something that's so stupid? Such as, you're teaching him to be selfish by not giving those snacks up. It literally could be essentially life-saving medicine for this kid. OP is clearly not the jerk. And this husband is so dense it legitimately pisses me off. Also, how dare a kid favor their bio parent over a step parent? Just another stupid argument point. Our next story is from Seahov. Am I the jerk for yelling at my wife after she woke me up to help with the kids? I'm male. My wife, female, Sonia, is a stay-at-home mom of our two children. 
a seven-year-old male and a five-year-old female. I really try to help with the kids when I get home. I know being a stay-at-home mom is pretty tiring, even though she has part-time off from school, but helping with homework, making food, and taking care of the kids can be exhausting. When I get home, I make dinner, wash the dishes, and stay with our children for a while so she can have her moment too. These weeks have been pretty exhausting. It's a very important month professionally. In November will be the delivery of a six-month project that my team and I are idealizing. Last week was the final touches and review of the entire project, so I went out to work at 8 a.m., got home at 5 p.m., took care of my kids till 9 p.m., and was actually working till 3 or 4 a.m. To get maybe 3 or 4 hours of sleep, I have trouble sleeping. So if I slept 12 hours in 5 days, it was a lot. I was exhausted. I wasn't even driving because I didn't trust my senses to drive. I couldn't vent to Sonia because she was stressed too. Our children had the flu. I was dragged to the hospital by my coworkers after nearly passing out for only walking. The doctor demanded that I take a week's medical leave because I was already on the verge of a burnout. When I got home, I spoke to my wife and she seemed to be understanding. I asked her to give me a day off from everything as I would try to get as much sleep as possible that night to come back better. She said fine. I offered to also give her a day off because I know she was tired too. I went to sleep at 9pm and woke up to Sonia nudging me to take the kids to school. I walk with them. I talked about what we talked about yesterday and she said, yeah, but that's your part of the morning and I have other morning plans, yoga class, gym and house cleaning. I asked her three times more to do this for me as I was still exhausted, 6.30 AM, but she just said, you're still a father, tired or not. It could be tired or not, but I ended up losing my mind and screaming, I just need a few hours of sleep. Please respect what I asked of you yesterday and let me sleep, man. She was in shock and said, okay then. She took the kids and I slept until 4 p.m. There were several messages from her saying that I shouldn't have yelled at her for asking me to take responsibility as a parent and that it was toxic behavior of mine. Well, we haven't talked much more than necessary for two days. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk because the doctor literally said, hey, you need to take some time off. If the doctor's saying you need to take some rest, you probably really do need to take some rest. OP went to their wife and said, hey, can you just handle everything for me for a day? She said yes, and then immediately expects you to still do that stuff that she agreed to take over, whether or not she was hoping that you'd still do some of it regardless. Not the jerk, and for OP's sake, I hope they get some sleep. I haven't been the best with sleeping regularly or consistently either, and honestly it freaks me out all the time hearing about how important sleep is. You know, how it like literally cleans your brain, how a lack of sleep can have a correlation to developing things like dementia down the road, how regularly sleeping helps your overall health and metabolism and things. Sleep is the one thing you should not skimp out on. Our next story is from Puzzleheaded Rush 413 Am I the jerk for refusing to sell my starter home for under market value to my mother and sister? I, 34 year old female, bought my starter home in my earlier 20s for $120,000. It's not a huge home, it's roughly a thousand square foot, two bed, one and a half bath townhome, but it was perfect for me at the time. I upgraded it and made it my home for 12 years. I've decided it's time to move on to something bigger. Here's my dilemma. My mother, 65, and my sister, 30, got wind that I was planning on putting my house on the market. My home was valued at approximately $400,000. Even with their combined income, neither could afford a mortgage that size. They want me to sell them my home for the $120,000 I bought it for. I plan on using the equity as the down payment on my new home, and that's roughly around $600,000. My mom and sister are pissed. They keep trying to convince me to sell the home for undervalue so they can finally have some stability in their life. My other dilemma is I've never had a good relationship with either of them and moved out of state to get away from them. Both of them are pissed at me and have dragged the whole family into the drama. Half are on my side and half are on their side. I need outside opinions at this point. If OP was like really well off and honestly just didn't really need the home, maybe you could argue that OP maybe should seriously consider it? But this is clearly a situation where OP's not only not the jerk, but would be making a huge mistake to do anything but sell it for as much as they could get. 
How much would you want to bet that you sold it to them for 120000 and that they'd go and immediately flip it for hundreds of thousands of more dollars? This next story is from Ordos Deluxe. Am I the jerk for leaving my sick wife to deal with two toddlers on her own? I, male 36, and my wife, female 35, have a three-year-old daughter. I have long-standing issues with my wife's sister-in-law because I think that my wife constantly panders to her and caters to her every whim, often at the expense of me and my daughter. Recently, we had a huge fight about her saying something offensive to me in a public setting in defense of sister-in-law at our daughter's expense, and up until this point she's tried to do better. We've both been floored with the flu for the past 10 days or so, negative COVID tests. She seems to have had it slightly worse than me, so I've been tagged in to do all the chores, childcare, and cooking while she's tried to get as much rest as possible. This has now trickled into a week I booked off work on holiday, which doesn't bother me in itself, because I'd rather make sure they were both okay. I am, however, starting to feel really run down myself now. I'm tired, I've had limited opportunity to rest and catch up on sleep, and I'm sore. Today, my wife woke up at around 9.15am, I'd been up since 6.30 with daughter, and said she was feeling a bit better. I said that's great, and maybe she could hold the fort while I went for a nap. She said that what she was actually thinking was inviting sister-in-law's youngest round for a playdate to keep our daughter occupied. For reference, she's three. This isn't an uncommon thing to happen. Sister-in-law often brings her kids to us, and for reasons I still don't understand, our daughter is never invited to spend an afternoon with them in their house. I said that I really wasn't feeling up to it today. My wife said that I wouldn't have to do anything to entertain them, to which I was skeptical about, so I agreed. So about 15 minutes after she arrives, I'm asked to get them drinks and snacks and then play games and occupy them. Now I'm aware that I'd have needed to do this for my own daughter, but going from one to two toddlers is such a huge leap in terms of the demand on your time and energy. Add this to the fact that I was feeling lousy and it just wasn't a good mix. I'm off work this week and on top of my illness, I didn't sign up for extra childcare duties. After about two hours, I told my wife that I was going up to my mom's house to get a sleep. The whole way up she was phoning and texting me, absolutely furious that I'd left her to deal with it. I'm literally lying in my mum's spare bed writing this now but my brain is too wired to sleep. Am I the jerk? I know it's crappy leaving her while she's sick to deal with two toddlers, but after so long holding the ball, I've reached my limit. I don't blame OP, this doesn't seem like much of a partnership here. To me it seems like their partner really is trying to milk OP for as much as they can. Everybody needs a break at some point, whether they're a parent or not. I mean, depending on your situations, you might not be able to take those breaks. But this is definitely a situation where you could and should have been able to have a break here or there. I think maybe a proper sit down and some open communication is hugely needed here. And I think if the wife doesn't hear you out, there's some serious issues here. Our next story is from Safe Translator 4967 Am I the jerk for moving out while my parents are on vacation? I, female 20, have three siblings who live at home, male 22, male 15, and male 12. My older brother doesn't work and doesn't go to school. My middle and youngest brothers are in middle and high school. I've been taking care of them for about six years now. My parents both work. I am the one who cleans and makes food and takes care of the dogs. I have access to a car that I share with my brother, but he takes it to go see his friends and hook up with Tinder randos. So I've had to bring home groceries on the bus because, oh yeah, I also do the grocery shopping. I've tried talking to my parents about it, but they say that my brother's finding himself and the younger ones have to concentrate on school. I'm in my third year of college and it's wrecking me. My boyfriend, 24, has talked to his parents and they're letting me move into the apartment over their garage. He'll be paying the rent for the apartment. He lives at home rent free but he also graduated and has a great job so we talked about it and it's fair. We're committed to each other but we're way too young to think about moving in together or getting married. I'm not saying that this is too young for anyone else, we just know what we want in life and until I get my nursing degree and get a job, we aren't ready. My parents went away this weekend for NASCAR in Vegas. It's their third vacation this year. I don't begrudge them their holidays, they both work hard but I'm tired of being an unpaid nanny and dog sitter. 
So I grabbed my laptop, clothes, and a few other things that I'd been gifted. I waited for my older brother to get home, and I left. I told him I was going out for milk, but my boyfriend was waiting in the car around the corner. He started texting me about 20 minutes later, saying he needed the car. I didn't take the car. I left all the keys on the counter, even my house keys. My grandparents pay for my education, so there's literally nothing my parents can hold over me. I let them know that I wasn't coming back, and I let my parents know after the last race that I'd left him in charge of the younger kids and bailed. They drove straight home instead of spending the night partying and driving home today. Everyone is mad at me for being so immature and thoughtless. I just don't care anymore. I talk to my grandfather, and he says that I'm right, and my brothers can look after themselves. My mom keeps calling and complaining that the house is a mess. I was only gone for nine hours before they got home, but my brothers are pigs. My older brother says I'm a jerk because my parents are making him do everything that I used to do. I can't find it in myself to give a crap. Am I the jerk? Definitely not the jerk because OP was being treated like an unpaid nanny dog sitter do my bidding person. You either give in and you live like that for just about the rest of your life or you cut it off and you get out of there and maybe you can repair the relationship down the road but they're going to try to manipulate you and call you the worst for not doing everything for them. I also agree with OP though, a 22 year old and a 15 year old at home, they can take care of themselves for a few days and their 12 year old younger sibling. I don't know what the parents do for work, I don't know what their pay grade is, but if they're too good to clean up their own house or they're too good to give their three kids some chores equally, then hey, they better buck up for an actual nanny. Our next story is from throwaway681074. Am I the jerk for ignoring our daughter when she tried to get her attention like that? I have two daughters, one of them is Abby, 22, and the other one is Anna, 16. When Abby was 16, she suddenly started to act weird, like screaming and yelling for no reason. We were very worried about her, so my husband and I put her in therapy and we did everything we could to help her. Anna always tries to do whatever Abby does. For example, when Abby turned 14, she joined the basketball team. When Anna turned 14, she did the exact same thing. There's many more examples. When Anna turned 16, she started to act exactly like Abby. It was clear that she was only doing this to get our attention, and there's nothing really wrong with her, so my husband and I decided to ignore her behavior, hoping she would stop acting like this, which after a month she did. However, now she's giving us the silent treatment. I was talking to my sister about this, and she told me we're jerks for ignoring her when she tried to get our attention. I think OP is the jerk because... Although your natural instinct may be to not want to give in to somebody who's clearly doing something for the sake of trying to get attention, you should be able to recognize as a parent that your kid is doing some kind of essentially a call for attention or help in some way, and a dialogue is, I think, encouraged, should have been had, not ignored. Our next story is from Particular Bar 9216. Am I the jerk for spending my daughter's tuition money? Our daughter is 20 year old female and she recently decided to go back to college after taking a year off. She dropped out of college a few months ago saying it wasn't for her. We adamantly advised against it, but she ended up moving with her boyfriend and started working in his family's restaurant business. There was still a little north of 30,000 set aside in the account I set aside for her tuition money. My wife and I have been wanting to remodel our kitchen for a while, so we decided to go ahead with that money. Well, now my daughter has decided to go back to college because it didn't work out with her boyfriend and she didn't like any of the jobs she had following that. She was shocked that we had used her college money towards the house even though we had this conversation before she left. She asked if she could have access to her college tuition account before she moved in with her boyfriend, to which we explicitly said no and said that it was saved for her tuition only and nothing else and that if she left we would use it for something else she said she thought we were bluffing and didn't actually mean it and that we need to help her pay for college since we're still paying for her younger brother's yearly tuition i told her she needs to work part-time and go to a cheaper place like community college rather than a state school she's been angry over this and ignoring her mother's phone calls her mother said maybe we can still help her out financially but we're nearing our retirement age and a little behind our retirement goals, 
so I don't want to take away from our savings just because my daughter made some bad choices. I feel like I've given her good alternatives and even offered to let her stay at our house free of rent so she can just focus on paying for college. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. They sat down and had that conversation. I mean, they seem like very loving parents. I imagine that convo was something along the lines of, Listen, we love you. We set that money aside solely for college. If you're turning that down right now, you're telling us you don't want to go to college. We're going to use it for something else. Well, exactly that happened. It sucks for the kid. And yeah, I mean, you wish the money was still around so they could go to college. But that was the decision they made. Our next story is from Help PPNE. Am I the jerk for calling my girlfriend a hypocrite and saying I can have a relationship with her dad if I want to? Me and my girlfriend Corey, both 27, have been together five years. I've known her family a long time and I formed a good relationship with her dad. We both golf and watch sports together. I consider him a friend. Like three years ago, it comes out third party that Corey's mom was having an affair. Her dad moved out and her mom went nuts. I stayed out of it, but I refused to accompany Corey to her mom's house. I don't mess with cheaters and let her go alone unless it's a big holiday or an important event at her mom's. This whole time, Corey was pushing her dad to reconcile with her mom. She begged him to try counseling and talked about forgiveness. I don't know what happened, but Corey's dad eventually gave in and went to counseling. They reconciled two years ago. Then it became this weird situation where Corey's mom seemed to enjoy bringing up her affair. She would post on social media how forgiveness in the church brought them back together, constantly talking about power of prayer. As a man, I could see her dad hated it. In my opinion, he was only sticking around for the sake of the family. In February this year, Corey's dad left in the middle of the night. According to Corey's mom, her dad told me he left a note. He moved in with a woman he'd been seeing. They're now divorced and Corey's dad's living with this woman. I've maintained my friendship with him. I told him I can't really blame him as he was in a no-win situation. Corey, on the other hand, has been a nightmare. She's blocked her dad, bashes him to friends and family, gets mad at me for carrying on a relationship with him. She also goes to her mom's house regularly to comfort her mom. None of this she did to her mom whenever she cheated years ago instead saying that they worked past that together. Last night I called her a hypocrite in front of her brother, saying that she never blamed her mom, instead preached forgiveness, never cut her mom off, never forced me to stop talking to her dad. She never went over to her dad's rental alone to comfort him, only push him to reconcile. She then demanded I stop talking to her dad. I said I'm an adult who doesn't let others dictate their relationships that me and her dad don't discuss her in any form. We talk baseball. So no, I wouldn't stop because she wants to be a hypocrite and not hold her mom accountable for what happened. I recommended therapy for her but was called a jerk for this. I don't think I need to apologize as calling her a hypocrite is accurate. Am I the jerk? I kind of feel like everybody in the story are all kind of the jerks here. I don't really think I see any party that's like not at least flawed in the story in some way. Both the parents for cheating on each other, the girlfriend for having hypocritical tendencies and taking sides, not owning up to it. And OP literally said, I don't mess with cheaters, but is still going to hang out with Corey's dad who, whether it was revenge or not, also cheated. And our final story of the day is from Bamato4832. Am I the jerk for not letting my daughter buy clothes? My wife, 37-year-old female, and I, 37-year-old male, have four kids. 14-year-olds female and male, a 12-year-old male and an 11-year-old female. We generally agree on parenting them, but a recent incident had me and my wife disagreeing and I want to see if I was in the wrong. A few weeks ago, I was at home with our 12-year-old because he was sick with a stomach bug. While I was making him soup, I got a call from my twins' high school telling me that they wanted to speak with me and that my daughter had received three days of in-school suspension for a bullying incident. Because of my son's sickness, I spoke through them via phone and they told me everything that had happened. My daughter and a group of her friends was picking on a boy for wearing a crop top. The boy told the teacher. She asked them to stop. When they didn't stop, she sent them to the office. After talking to the boy, he admitted the bullying was going on for a few days and they kept bothering him when they asked him to stop. My daughter and son came home and my son's face was bright red. I told my daughter to go to her room and then sat down with my son to see if he was okay. 
Apparently, the boy she bullied was a close friend of his, one of his football teammates. The boy was talking to my son and their other friends and said something about how he thought it was cool that some men used to wear sports crop tops. The boys told him that if he thought it was cool, he should try it. The boys went out and bought some jerseys from the thrift store and made them into crop tops. I then spoke to my daughter. She didn't show much remorse and was dismissive of me. Last year, she also got in trouble for bullying someone because of clothing. She's also gotten in trouble for racism at school. A very white area. We're white. Her and her friends were saying racist stuff in class. When my wife got home, we discussed a punishment and agreed on not buying her new clothes for a while. She has plenty of good clothes already. This weekend, we went to visit my brother. My brother lives about three hours away in a small town, and we don't see him often. This week was the town's annual fair. At the fair, they had booths from the local businesses. Our oldest son went to the booth with antique sports stuff, and then the book booth to get books on sports history. Son loves reading those. Our 12-year-old got some plushies and toys, and our youngest was looking at video games. Our oldest daughter went to the clothes. I stopped her and told her the rule was still in place. I said she could buy books, a video game, candy, etc., but clothes were the one thing she could not get. She was bugging my wife, and my wife eventually told her she would reconsider it. She then talked to me, and I told her that I wasn't changing my stance because I'm letting her buy other stuff, and I thought she was being entitled. My daughter didn't buy anything, and my wife thinks I was too tough on her. When I called my mom for advice, she also agreed with my wife. Am I the jerk? I think both parents are the jerks here. Considering all of this behavior that the daughter's doing, all they're doing is simply restricting them from buying clothes? That's really what makes them the jerk, let alone the fact that one parent is going back on an already slap on the wrist level punishment. I think that's an open and shut case here. They need to do some more serious work with their daughter before this behavior really sets in and that's who they are, if it's not already too late. Am I the jerk for doing the same thing to my sister-in-law that she does to my son? So background, I, 32-year-old female, have a brother, Dave, 35-year-old male, who's married to Sarah, 29-year-old female. They don't have children yet. I have a son who just turned four and a three-month-old daughter with my husband, 39-year-old male. My husband and I live in Belgium most of the time, but we travel back to visit my family about once a month in England. At home, we speak both English and French to our children. My husband's Belgian. And right now, my son is in this very sweet phase where he'll sometimes mix up the two languages and say a couple words in English and a French sentence or vice versa. This has never posed a problem to us, and even the staff at his nursery have reassured us that it's very common and they tend to grow out of it once they start at school. My sister-in-law has decided that this is a problem, so when we're visiting my parents and she notices my son doing this, she'll correct him but she does so really rudely, whereas my husband and I will just gently correct him. Anyways, we're visiting at the moment, and she's now decided that instead of correcting him, she's just going to start ignoring him when he does this. I sort of noticed her doing it when we arrived, and I thought it was odd, but assumed that maybe she was just stressed. Her job is quite intense, but it only really became an issue yesterday. My husband was talking to my dad outside, and I was feeding my daughter in the other room, and I'd left Lewis with Sarah and Dave. When I came back downstairs, Lewis was crying, and I managed to understand that he tried to ask Sarah for a drink. He has a special cup he uses that he was holding, so it was obvious what he meant, but that she just ignored him. I asked her why, and she explained that she wasn't going to reply to him unless he said the sentence correctly, and that I shouldn't be ignoring my son's obvious speech issues. For context, it's not that she didn't know what he wanted. She told me that she understood exactly what he was asking for, but that she was deliberately refusing because he hadn't asked correctly. This really pissed me off, but luckily my husband came inside at that moment and pulled me away so we could calm down and settle Lewis. That night at the dinner table, Sarah asked me to pass her something, but she said it in bad English. She is English. I just mean that she asked for it in slang. Think... Pass us the peas, will you? I had a bit of an epiphany, and I just decided to totally ignore her. She asked again, and I did the same thing. My brother asked why I was ignoring his wife, and I said that I'm not able to reply if she can't speak English correctly, and that it's wrong of him to ignore her obvious issues with grammar. 
Everyone's pretty pissed off with me, and I admit that it was incredibly childish, but she was needlessly being a jerk to my baby. Should I just apologize? I think OP has nothing to apologize for here. I think they're not the jerk because they're just a kid. They're just practically still a baby. Let alone the fact that this isn't something to shame a kid over. But treating them this way is just going to be really weird, I feel, for them. Like, God forbid you leave this kid wondering what's going on and why they're ignoring them. Would you guys rather have OP had told the sister-in-law off? Or do you think it's better that they just kept their focus on Lewis and calming them down? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Proud Buyer 8918 Am I the jerk for dumping the truth on my sister? My parents had two girls, me, 17-year-old female, and my sister, 14-year-old female. I've always felt like my parents saw me as a babysitter, as a third adult in the house, and have expected me to be a 40-year-old kid-slash-teenager. Whereas my sister was their baby, they spoil her rotten, they adore her, she's never wanted for anything, and they do everything to make her happy. I was expected to help take care of my sister for as long as I can remember. She's not special needs, was never sick, wasn't even a preemie either, but that was the dynamic that was set up. I remember I would come home from school and mom would have me help feed my sister. She would have me watch her and then while she was in and out of the house, I would be told I needed to play with her if my sister was upset. She'd miss me a lot and my parents would insist I dedicate my time to her once I was home. We would go out as a family and she'd want something and they'd get it for her, but I would be told to act my age if I wanted something. She would get to hang out with friends whenever she wanted, would have really amazing birthday parties and sleepovers that I was never allowed to have. I also never got to attend sleepovers at other friends' houses. There were times my parents would take her to do really amazing stuff and I was left behind. Over time, my sister started to get annoyed by my pulling back when I was around 15. I kept to myself. I'm moody around them. I don't engage in the family. I take the punishments rather than do chores since she has none assigned to her. My parents hate that I won't be the little housekeeper they wanted. My sisters told me I'm a brat and ungrateful for not helping our parents who are amazing. Over time it's gotten worse. Then she heard me making plans to leave with my friends in a couple of months. She was so pissed that I was going to leave the family behind and that I hadn't told the family anything. She talked about how mom and dad had saved for us to go to college and I just want to run away. Something broke inside me when she said that. I told her she has a college fund waiting for her, but I don't. Just like she can get anything she wants while I'm told to act my age and not want anything. I told her she expects me to be a maid when I get nothing and she gets everything. I told her I'm not that much older than her, but everyone expects me to be an adult. I asked her how she'd feel if she was supposed to juggle a younger sibling, take care of the bulk of the household chores, schoolwork, and not getting time with friends. That the only reason you have crap is because you work, but it leaves you exhausted because you already have so much on. I told her that is my life, and she doesn't make me want to stay any more than our parents do. To cut this short, she's upset and I was called a jerk for being so mean to her. My sister said I was a jerk for dumping all that on her shoulders. Am I the jerk? I think OP's definitely not the jerk. If the sister didn't want all that dumped on their shoulders, they shouldn't have asked, they shouldn't have bothered, and they shouldn't have tried to call OP out on it. You wanna go at OP and call them out, say bad things about them because they wanna get out of that crappy situation? Well then the least you can do is hear them out and understand where they're coming from. But they don't want to do that. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Lillian Daigle 2309 Am I the jerk for not showing up to the birthday party that my husband planned for me? So my husband's a jokester and a prankster. He has a habit of pulling pranks, especially on my birthdays. He judges my reactions as overreactions and says I should loosen up and be extra happy because he thinks he's making my birthdays extra funny. But it actually upsets me and puts me in a position where I get laughed at and recorded by his family. He planned for my 26th birthday this past week, which was held at a restaurant. I told him I wouldn't go if he was going to pull one of those pranks he's famous for, because it's a public place and I don't want to be publicly humiliated. He swore on his mom, on the Bible, promised me and brought two witnesses. 
wrote an agreement stating he'd pay money if I pulled a prank. I believed him and said I'd go. I had to cancel with my parents who wanted to celebrate at their house. The day of my birthday, I got a text from one of his friend's wives telling me she heard him tell her husband about the prank he was going to pull on me at the restaurant. I was stunned as she detailed what the plan was going to be. I felt so upset and anxious. He already went ahead and got to the restaurant to make sure all was set. I ended up deciding not to go. He started calling and then texting, asking where I was and saying the party was going to start without me. I turned my phone off and went to my parents' house and had a small party there. I went home at 7pm and found my husband there fuming at me. He lashed out asking why in heck did I not show up to the party after he put money, time and effort in it. I told him why and he called his friend's wife a liar and reminded me of all the promises he had made and accused me of not trusting his word. I said I couldn't take the chance and risk having him basically ruin another birthday of mine. We had a huge argument, and then he started giving the cold shoulder while pointing out how I embarrassed him and wasted his time and money by not showing up. Although I definitely understand OP's position here, I'm going to say OP is the jerk because when hearing this rumor from the friend's wife, OP should have just gone straight to their husband and brought it up and laid it all out there how if anything remotely like that happens, they are gone. For OP to have heard the rumor and acted on it without ever just trying to investigate or clear it with their husband, I just feel like that's a bit much. Just going straight MIA after the husband tried to promise so much. At the end of the day, if this is a situation where you cannot trust them at all, my question is why is this still ongoing? I will be fair though, everybody's commenting on this post saying OP's not the jerk, so maybe I'm just totally off base and totally wrong here. Our next story is from Azza 110620. Am I the jerk for stealing back a necklace my father made me give to my stepsister? I'm female, 15. My parents divorced when I was 4, and my father, 47 year old male, remarried 2 years later. My stepmother Elizabeth, 40 year old female, brought her daughter, 13 year old female, with her when she moved in with my father. By court order, I live half on half off with my dad, but tend to stick around my mums more anyways since I hate my stepfamily. Since Elizabeth remarried my father, she's taken it upon herself to basically cut me out of the family, and once my half-brother, 8 years old, was born, it's like they barely knew I existed. My father hasn't turned up to one of my big events since I was 11, and that was my birthday party. I was really close with my grandmother on my father's side and loved her to bits. When I was 12, she bought us matching Tiffany necklaces for my birthday. Just a really simple Tiffany heart, but I really loved it. When my grandmother died earlier this year, she left all of her possessions to me and my cousin Daniel, 17 year old male, who I'm also really close to. All of her assets were sold and any money she had was divided between us to put into a trust that we can't access until we're 25. She also left me the matching necklace she got to go with mine. When I received it, my stepsister began crying and complaining about me having two necklaces while she has none. My dad said he'll buy her one as well if she calms down, but she started screaming even more saying she wanted my grandmother's. My dad tried to get me to give it to her, but I refused. He ended up threatening to take my phone and remove enough money for another version of the necklace from my bank account about 500 Australian dollars. I handed it over and left to my mother almost immediately. When I spoke over the phone to my cousin about it that evening, he said that we should break into my dad's house and take it back. I thought it was a fabulous idea. So at about 11.30 PM that night, we drove over to his house and entered through the back door to which I have a key. We snuck through the house to my stepsister's room and took it back. The next morning I received a call from my dad asking what I thought I was doing breaking into the house so late at night. I totally forgot he had one of those doorbells that records and it videoed us walking around the side of the house. He demanded I give the necklace back. I told him that all he does is treat me like crap and I won't be returning to his house anytime soon and that he better drop all the fuss over a necklace that is mine. I haven't spoken to him since, but I've received some few tastefully worded texts from my stepmother's family about how upset I made my stepsister 
Also, my father's been blowing up his sister's phone, Daniel's mother, saying what a bad job she did raising him and other bad stuff like that. I asked my mom what she thinks, but she thinks it was my right to take the necklace back, but maybe breaking into my father's house at night was a bit rash? I don't think I was wrong at all, but I wanted to ask. So I'm wondering if I may be the jerk in this situation. Now I will say, normally I would not endorse breaking and entering, but this is a situation where you went into your dad's house and took back what was left to you. This is your property that has huge sentimental value to you and they don't deserve to have it, and you have every right to have it back. Can it really even be considered breaking and entering if they live there half their life? I don't think so, and did it make Obi the jerk? I think definitely not. Our next story is from Lost Construction 492. Am I the jerk for calling my stepmother delusional for thinking I would change my mind on her adopting me? My mom died when I was 6 years old. My dad ended up turning to one of his good friends, Anna, and they ended up getting married when I was 7. Anna brought up the idea of adopting me the day of the wedding. It was something my dad was all for, but I went nuts when she mentioned it to me, and I kind of spoiled the rest of the wedding. For the next year, we did this really intense therapy where I was told over and over again by the therapist and them that I needed a mom, that it would provide safety for me, and that it wouldn't be a betrayal of my mom to accept another loving mom into my life. The therapist put the recommendation into court to approve it, but when the judge spoke to me, I told him that I would run away and that I would do everything to never come back. I was 8 at the time and I meant business. He asked me why I didn't want to be adopted. He listened. And when he addressed the court again, he denied the adoption request and told my dad and Anna that until I was on board, no adoption would be approved in his court. They did try again, requesting a different judge, but received the same response. I was asked constantly to change my mind. Anna would put her all into trying to fill the place of a mom in my life. Every time I told her she could never be my mom, she took it as a challenge to try harder and better, and she would dedicate so much time to me it was crazy. I never appreciated it, because instead of just being Anna, and instead of my dad telling her to be just Anna, She saw mom as the only thing she wanted. Even when she had kids of her own, I was their oldest son. I was her son, her boy, she'd call herself a boy mom, etc. Whereas I have never called her mom. If we're being honest, I don't even love her after all these years. I see her as more of an intrusive family member who won't stop. My relationship with my dad is also not the best because I don't like that he wouldn't take no for an answer and that he was so quick to try and push an adoption. Even after I told him I would rather be with grandparents or an aunt and uncle or close family friend to Anna if he died, he insisted being with Anna and her being my mom was the best for me. I turned 18 a few months ago and I ran like my butt was on fire to get away from my dad and Anna. I lived with my maternal grandparents for a little while before moving in with my maternal uncle who lived near a really good apprenticeship I wanted to join. My paternal grandparents celebrated their wedding anniversary this past weekend and I was there. While there, Anna approached me and handed me papers for an adult adoption. She told me she loved me and she wanted me to know it wasn't too late, that she would still adopt me and she wanted to make our relationship official as mother and son. I asked her how she could be so delusional when I've said no to being adopted for 11 years now. I told her I would not change my mind. She and my dad were so pissed at my choice of words and chaos ensued at the party. Am I the jerk? Definitely not the jerk here. I think the common theme is what OP pointed out. They tried way too hard and tried to force it. Maybe if Anna came into OP's life and just was that motherly role for them without trying to put a label on it, without pressuring them to make a decision, maybe OP would have opened up to it. And even if they never did, it's totally fine. I feel like you can be a motherly figure to somebody and not actually be their mom. If Anna truly loved OP as much as they claim they did, They wouldn't have been acting so insecure and trying to force this kind of inappropriate adoption. If she wanted to be that stepmom who stepped in and saved the day by being the new mom, they should have done it through actions, not labels. This next story is from Salty Strawberry 392 
Am I the jerk for yelling at a woman on the bus after how she treated my niece? I, female 21, have a niece Kara, female 11, who's disabled and uses a wheelchair. A few days ago, I took Kara to a convention in our city. We took the bus as I can't drive, and public transport's good in our area. Whilst we were on the bus to the convention, a woman with a baby in a pram got on the bus. Kara was taking up the space for prams and wheelchairs. There's only enough space for one. So the bus driver told her she'd have to fold up the pram and put the baby on her lap. She said that was fine. The woman folded up the pram and put it in the luggage section. Then she asked Kara if she could hold her baby. And without waiting for an answer, she put the baby in Kara's lap. Kara was speechless and I told the woman that Kara doesn't want to hold her baby. She said there's no seats close to the luggage section, as in there are no seats built in that area. I was standing up for the ride, so Kara might as well hold her baby since she's already sat down. I told her she's being weird. I took the baby off Kara's lap and held it out to the woman and told her to hold her own baby. She said she's tired and can't whilst standing up. I lost my cool and started yelling at her and told her there's seats on the back of the bus and that my niece is in a baby shelf and said she's a freaking weirdo. She took the baby off me and gave me the middle finger and sat on the floor. I got a lot of dirty looks off of the other passengers, so I'm wondering if I was the jerk. I love what OP did here. I think they did the perfect thing. I don't know what all these people giving OP dirty looks was about. But you're out here in public transport, you look after your own darn baby. It may take a village to raise a child, but we ain't part of your village. We're just trying to go to a convention. Definitely not the jerk. Our next story is from Woods Buried 66. Am I the jerk for not wanting to pay for my son's wedding? My son and his fiance are getting married in April next year and are currently going through sorting out their wedding plans. They've been together for five years, and while I don't exactly get along the greatest with her at times, we're friendly and do hang out from time to time. Recently, she's seen more stressed out with the whole wedding plans, as she wants to have her dream wedding that she's envisioned since she was a child. Her plan is very expensive, something that they can't afford without going into more debt, but she won't back down with trying to take it a scale back whenever someone brings it up claiming that the person in question was being unsupportive, unhelpful, etc, etc. She's asked everyone to give her cash, which normally I wouldn't find strange, but she's been asking for large sums, such as a thousand dollars, or at least gifts worth the equivalent if the person was unwilling to shell out that much. My son hasn't said much about this behavior, at least publicly. He seems more tired though, and he hasn't been calling much as he did before not picking up calls from me or his sister. Now, I've contributed to the wedding costs that are reasonable, at least to my budget. She's asked me to contribute more, basically at least half the cost. Something I can't nor won't pay as, to put it lightly, a huge amount that I don't want to give a wedding. Perhaps paying off a mortgage, but not a wedding. She's accused me of trying to ruin her wedding and threatened to take me off the invite list and bar me from the wedding. My sons told me to just apologize and leave it, but I haven't backed down yet. This has caused a bit of a rift in the family, as my son has completely ignored me and anyone else aside from his fiancé's side of the family since. And now I'm wondering if I should just suck it up. Am I the jerk? Whether it is your son that you love more than the world itself, at the end of the day, I think it's your money and you spend it however you see fit. If something seems weird, inappropriate, or you feel like maybe they don't deserve it because they treat you badly, then I think you have every right to save your money and not spend it on that. And I don't think it makes you a jerk for not giving people your money. I mean, let's be real, going around asking other people for just a straight up thousand dollar gift, it's a bit ludicrous unless like everybody in this whole family is just rich rich. Like, oh, they're all related to the Gates family. But if that was the case, they probably wouldn't have an issue funding the wedding. Our next story is from MBJ19758. Am I the jerk for telling my friends how my date's mother called him five times during our two-hour date? I, 27-year-old female, went on a date with Jack, 30-year-old male, recently. It was our first and last date. I didn't know him really well and we only know each other through friends. We were set up by one of them and we talked a bit before deciding to go out. He seemed normal. We went to a cafe. Now, we'd only gotten there, just sat down, when he got a call from his mom. 
No big deal. He took the call in front of me, so I had no other option to hear what he was talking about. He told his mum that we had arrived and it's all fine. I thought, that's fine. Maybe he was anxious or something, or his mum was wishing him luck. We got talking, and within half an hour, his mum called again. He picked it up and gave her an update of everything we had talked about in the last 30 minutes. It weirded me out, but then she proceeded to call him three more times within two hours. And he would recap everything we had talked about right in front of me, and then go back to the conversation as if nothing had happened. I even commented about his mom's constant calling, and he said he's a mama's boy. It weirded me out, so I cut our date short and turned down his idea for dinner. When I reached home, I messaged him that I had a good time, but I couldn't see a future with him, as our personalities were poles apart. He responded with, Okay, best of luck. Obviously, the friend who had set us up asked me about the date, and I told her about his mom calling every half an hour. I also told my friends about the date. Now, apparently he asked out another girl and she turned him down. He found out that people knew about the situation. He sent a text calling me some nice words and saying that it was private information and I shouldn't have told people about it. He also called me a racist, which doesn't make sense to me. We're both of Indian descent. I mean, it wasn't the constant calling that stuck out to me. It was the fact that he was literally recapping everything to her. This whole severe codependency situation didn't sit right with me at all. I do think I might be a jerk because I told his private business to the world, but also maybe not. Honestly, I'm of the opinion that having a super close relationship with your mom is kind of awesome, but this is definitely way beyond even that. Like calling them every half hour and telling them everything that's gone on? That's just weird and too much. And I'm sorry, but if this happened to you on a date, I think you kind of have every right to talk about how your date went with whoever you want. This isn't like him talking about his traumatic high school experience or something. This is just the basic gist of what happened between you and him on a date. It's not OP's fault that what the guy is doing on dates and in general is tanking his opportunities as far as a love life goes. And our final story of the day is from White Sir. Am I the jerk for not letting my niece try on my engagement ring? My fiancé's sister and her husband came over for dinner last night. They have a five-year-old daughter, Emily. Some background, Emily is a very curious girl and loves to play and explore and she really loves playing dress up. I have a pretty nice clothing and shoe collection that I showed Emily one of the first times she came over. Since then, I've let Emily borrow many items of my clothing to try on for fun and put on fashion shows with. I was completely okay with this until this summer when Emily asked to try on a pair of my expensive heels. This was partially my fault in that I said yes, but I couldn't monitor her the entire time because I was busy preparing food for a lunch party I was setting up. I thought that her parents were watching her since they saw her putting them on, but apparently not. I come back to check in on her 20 minutes later and she had cut off one of the bows off one of the shoes and was in the process of cutting off the other one. I was absolutely horrified and immediately stopped her, which resulted in a huge tantrum. Her parents rushed in and were asking her what happened and she said she didn't like the look of the bows and wanted them off. So she found scissors from my office which she wasn't supposed to go into at all. I was extremely upset at this and had to excuse myself to calm down. After, my fiancé's sister and husband apologized and seemed really sorry, but never offered to pay for the cost of repair. My fiancé, unbeknownst to me at the time, had then reached out to his sister to ask her to either buy me a new pair or pay for the repair. I declined because it sounded like she was forced to send the text. Fast forward to last night, It's their family's first time seeing us after the engagement, which happened three weeks ago, yay. It was Emily's first time seeing the ring, so she kept asking me to show her, and I did multiple times. After dinner, we were all sitting on the couch, and Emily asked to see the ring again, except this time, she asked if she could try it on. I was expecting my fiancé's sister to intervene immediately and tell her that it isn't appropriate, but she said nothing and just laughed. I was personally uncomfortable with the idea of her trying it on because 1. 
The ring is very personal to me and very expensive. And two, I was still slightly scarred after the whole shoe incident and was worried about something like that happening again. I basically said something like, oh, this ring is very dear to me and I would like to keep it on my finger, but I can give you one of my other rings to try on if you'd like. She said no and asked again. I repeated myself. She started getting teary and that's when her mom intervened and said, oh, come on, just let her try it on for a second. She's not gonna break the darn thing. I was getting annoyed at this point. So I just said, I'd really prefer not. Cue awkward silence. Then her husband says, well, we should get going. But before they went out the door, my fiance's sister said, well, now I get why you two don't want children. It's probably better off for everyone. I was immediately shocked by this absurd statement. And then my fiance goes, that was freaking uncalled for. And she said, it's just the truth and rolled her eyes and they all left. Now my fiance is refusing to speak to his sister and has told me that we're not having her back again and everyone's just overall upset. My fiance doesn't blame me, but I can't help but think that maybe I should have acted differently. Am I the problem here? I think OP is definitely not the jerk here. Your belongings are your belongings and I'm sorry, but as much as a kid wants to play with your stuff, I think it's a very common thing to have things that you consider untouchable by other people's kids. When I was a kid and I went over to my aunt and uncle's house, they were the kind of people that had all kinds of collectibles, bunch of shelves with stuff all over. They loved Beatles stuff, they had little knickknacks here and there. I would love to have gone around and touched all these things and messed with them, but clearly all these glass trinkets and records and Beatles nesting dolls and whatever, those are off limits. If not only can the kids not accept that, but the parents can't, I think there's some real issues here. Also, I feel bad for the girl because the parents are very clearly enabling them. God forbid they grow up spoiled and entitled. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy Am I the Jerk here story, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.